All right, time to play ball. The Dodgers and the Mets from Dodger Stadium. And now for the play-by-play, here's Ben Scully, Vinny. Thank you, Ross. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Sunday to you, wherever you may be. And I'll bet you are a lot of places today at the beach. Maybe those looking for a little shade and a sizable crowd here at Dodger Stadium for the final game of the series with the Mets and the last game of the homestand before the Dodgers go out to Houston and San Francisco. Joel Youngblood is in center field today, followed by Frank Tavares and Cordell Washington. The pitch foul back to the screen, so we're underway. So Lee Mazzilli, who normally was the center fielder period, took over first base for a while. Mazzilli now sits down. We're also getting a change in the Mets starting lineup. The next pitch to Youngblood is fouled away. It is a change that has not been made as yet officially on the scoreboard. But we understand that Elliot Maddox is going to hit second. And Marino will play second base and hit eighth, uh, seventh. And Doug Flynn is going to play short. So if you're keeping score, hold on. You've got as big a mess as we have. Youngblood takes inside. So we'll make that switch in the book. And you will not win any award for neatness today. The one-two pitch is fouled off. So put Elliot Maddox in the number two slot. And Maddox is the third baseman. Then you're okay until you get down after Stern. And move Flynn into the number seven spot. And Flynn's going to play shortstop. And Jose Marino will play second base. Here's a one-two pitch on the way. Youngblood grounds it down to short. Daryl Thomas up with it and throws him out. So one away. And here comes Elliot Maddox, the third baseman. So a last-minute change in the Mets' starting lineup. So Frank Tavares sits down. Flynn moves over to short, and Jose Marino playing second base. So here is Maddox. Elliott hitting 268. Good ball player. He can give you a good job at a lot of positions, so that makes him doubly valuable. Gold works from inside. Ball one, one and oh. For Dave Gold, if he can possibly do it, what he has to do today is have a good time. The 1 0 pitch is fouled away, 1 and 1. Dave has fallen into that human bad habit of trying to shoulder everything, worrying himself half to death, having received a big contract and being a newcomer to the staff. He's trying to make a perfect game every time out, and it's not working. There's a big chopper that's going to go fair inside third and down the line. And with one out, Maddox is on his way for two. Baker makes a good, strong throw, but it's late. So Maddox doubles over third and down the line with one out. Rodell Washington, talented right fielder coming up. Washington has one hit in his 17 at-bats since coming over from the White Sox. Rodell from up north. You might remember him when he was with Oakland. He played against the Dodgers in the 74 World Series. So Cordell Washington, left-hand batter hitting third. Steve Henderson in the cleanup spot on deck. Gold delivers inside. Ball one, one and oh. Dave, like Bobby Welch, had a big lead getaway in New York. He led five to nothing, but he had to come out. He didn't have any decision, but the Mets went on to win the game six to five. The one oh pitch change, and that's a little high, ball two, two and oh. Ed Montague, the plate umpire, Ed Vargo at first, Zach Davidson at second, and Dave Pallone on the line back at third. Chuck Cotier coaching at third, and Joe Pignatano over at first. The 2-0 pitch, low and away, ball three, three and oh. And we mentioned last night, and now, of course, it has come to pass, the Mets are faced with the bleak prospect of the first time since we've had three teams in California. They're faced with the prospect of not winning a game in California on this trip. It's a strike and the count three and one. They lost two in San Francisco. They lost two in San Diego. They've lost two so far here. 
and they're not through yet. They then have to go to Chicago and Philadelphia. They can still have two doubleheaders on this road trip. Three one pitch is driven to deep right center field. That's a shot. It's a shot and a half. It's in the seat for a home run. So Dave Goltz with one out gives up a double to Maddox. A home run for Claudel Washington. And I tell you what, when the Mets hit a home run, that stops traffic in New York. That is only the 16th home run hit by the Mets. And we have told you how the gag in New York is the Mets as a team are still far behind Roger Maris' home run base. Washington had 46 lifetime home runs. He hit as many as 13 with the White Sox last year. So Cordell hits it out, and it is two to nothing New York. The team's 16th home run. For Dave Gold, that's only the sixth home run that he's allowed. The batter now is Steve Henderson, and he backs off on a pitch inside. Ball one, one and all. Henderson hitting 3.23. Talking about the White Sox, final score, Detroit 7 and the White Sox 1. That's the first game of a doubleheader. For New York, that home run by Cordell Washington, the first home run that the Mets have hit against the Dodgers. The pitch in there for a strike, 1-1. One and one. To give you an idea, the Dodgers have hit eight home runs against New York. However... After five games, the Mets have won three out of five. One and one to count to Henderson. Two to nothing, New York, in the first inning. Goals into the windup, and the 1-1 one -one pitch is hit slowly wide at third. Say gloves it, turns his body, throws in the dirt, and it's dug out by Garvey. But as soon as Say had to turn his body to throw, you knew he couldn't get much of a team on the throw, but Garvey dug it out. So two down, and Mike Jorgensen coming up. Jorgensen takes a look at a pitch on the outside corner for a strike, going one. The next pitch is Jorgensen over for a strike, and the count on two. We're going to check our records. We've said that's the first home run the Mets have hit against the Dodgers this year. Add one, because Mike Jorgensen hit a grand slam home run against Rick Sutcliffe in New York. And we certainly don't want to deprive Mike of that. Goals into the windup, and the strike two pitch is grounded to say. Ron comes up with it, throws high, but Garvey does it so down. So two runs, two hits, and at the end of half an inning, the Mets two, and the Dodgers coming up. Bottom of the first inning, the Mets have two to work with. We'll take a look at them defensively. On the mound is John Pacella. Behind the plate, John Stern. At first base, Mike Jorgensen. The second baseman is Jose Marino. The shortstop is Doug Flynn. And the third baseman is Elliot Maddox. In the outfield, Steve Henderson is in left field. Joel Youngblood is in center. And Claudel Washington, who just homered, is in right. John Pacella, born in Brooklyn, New York. He lives out on the island in Oakdale, and he's been pitching professionally since 1974. There are a lot of things to say about John Pacella, but perhaps the most important at this stage of his development is keep your eye on his hat. That's right, his hat. Pacella has a habit of making a great follow-through, but in doing so, his hat falls off. In fact, it became his trademark with the New York Mets, and they tried everything imaginable to keep that hat on his head. They got a smaller size hat and it didn't work. Then they even had to stick them as they tried to attach it to his head. And still the hat would fall off. Of course, Pacella says that when his hat falls off, all of his motion is perfect. And in his last game in New York, they have a fella at Chase Stadium, they say, who actually counts it. If you, <laughs> you want to talk about a, a watch my line job, there's a man at Shea Stadium who keeps track of how many times John Pacella's hat falls off. And they tell us that the last game he pitched in New York, 
his hat fell off 27 times. All right, with that in mind, we'll take a look at Rudy Law, Davy Lopes, and Jay Johnstone. The right-hander Pacella, ready, delivers, and throws it to the backstop, but his hat stayed on. One ball and no strike. Is that a wild story? Free agent draft out of the 74 draft. You know, when Sandy Kopak first pitched with the Dodgers, he lost his hat quite often, because that was a sign of distress with him. The 1-0 pitch outside, ball two. Eventually, as Kopak smoothed out his delivery, the hat was no longer a problem. Two balls and no strikes to count. John Pacella, 23 years old. He'll be 24 in September. The right-handed 2-0 pitch on the way. That picks up the outside corner for a strike. He throws pretty hard. Coming into the game, he's made four starts. He has no record, and his earned run average a little over four. The next pitch fouled away by Rudy, and they count two balls and two strikes. When you look at John Pacella and you hear about all the problems trying to keep his hat on, the thought that comes immediately to mind when you look at him through binoculars is, how about a haircut? Fly ball to center, and Youngblood is there to make the catch. But he likes the long lock, and evidently, the hat will stay on. We're talking about hair, and it's early in the ballgame. Jose Cardinal, who has one of, it looks like he opened up a Morris chair. He has one of the biggest afros around. And Cardinal wears a Texas hat on top of that thing. And the gag is that he has so much hair on his head, it's not a 10-gallon hat, it's a 15-gallon hat. So enough about hair and hats, one away, and here's Davy Lowe. And John Pacella delivers, a slider hit into right center field and sinking. Here comes Washington and diving with Youngblood. Neither man can catch it. In the second base goes Davy Lowe, and Cordell Washington is shaken up. I don't know whether Washington hurt himself when he hit the ground or whether Joel Youngblood went by and nicked him or even if the ball hit him. But Cordell Washington, with his left hand across his eyes out there on the field, we can take a look because we have the instant replay facility of the New York Mets telecast. Lopes hit a fly ball in the right center. Joel Youngblood and Cordell Washington and they are just about coming together now. Youngblood went down first, and it looks like maybe Joel Youngblood's right knee or the ball, either one, hit Washington. Now they're going to show it to us from another angle. Youngblood went down first in a slide. It's still hard to say whether it was Youngblood's leg or the ball, or he just shook himself up because they're kind of a blur, one going each way. They did not collide. It's not a case of Youngblood and Washington running together. And, of course, immediately you think of last July 23rd, a terrible collision here between Dan Norman and Lee Mazzilli. This was not a collision, but Washington was hit by something, I think. It was either Youngblood's leg going by or the ball. And Cordell Washington, who had a two-run home run, is shaken up out on the grass in right center field. They're still trying to stop the instant replay to show that he just can't pick it off. Youngblood was going into a sliding catch at them while Washington was going head first. And it could easily have been that Youngblood's right leg or foot kicked him as he rolled over and Washington went by. Claudel now being ministered to by the Mets trainer. A little smelling salt to really sting him and make him shake it off. And he's still sitting down with all of his teammates anxiously around him. And they have brought out a towel that's been immersed in cold water. You say that won't wash away the cobwebs. So Cordell Washington shaken up on a looping double to right center field off the bat of Davy Lopes. Lopes is going to trot out there to see how the fallen outfielder is. So Washington is still down. Davey hit the ball at the end of the bat. It was a slider. He didn't hit it hard, but it hit it in no man's land, equally distant between Washington and Youngblood. 
And then as Washington went diving head first, and Youngblood went into that sitting, sliding attempt to catch, something, I believe, hit Washington. Either Youngblood's foot, leg, knee, or maybe even the baseball. But it happened too fast. Now they are working on Youngblood. And they are working on Joel's right, right ankle. So it could have been that Youngblood's right leg, as he went sliding across, as he turned over, it might have been he hit Washington in the head with his ankle. And Washington, with a headache, is still sitting down, and they're now working on Youngblood's right ankle. And of course, for the Mets, that's all they need. They come into this game with a seven-game losing streak. Everything has gone wrong for them on this road trip. And they have a long way to go before they get home. And they've got two outfielders down on one play. One thing for the Mets, if they are rich in any department, they would appear to have a number of outfielders. But we certainly hope that Washington and Youngblood will be all right. Washington is now up. And again, they are running their smelling salts under his nostrils to make him clear-headed. Meanwhile, Joel Youngblood is putting on his shoe on his right foot. So it would appear that Joel is okay. And in a few moments, hopefully, we'll continue the game with the same starting players. The collision a year ago between Mazzilli and Norman was an awful thing to see. And they carried Mazzilli off the field and he went to the hospital. And it was a great surprise to realize that Mazzilli was okay. He, he spent two days for a precautionary measure and then he was out well and home and playing. This was not that kind of a collision, but nevertheless, both men were shaken up, Washington certainly. And they're on their feet now. Cardinal comes out of the dugout, but Jose just throws a warm-up ball to John Stern. We get a report out of Philadelphia, and it begins this way. National League, Philadelphia 1, San Francisco coming to bat. And then it says, special note, Willie McCovey announces his retirement as of July 10th. Well, a round of applause to the fallen Mets outfielders, both of whom evidently will continue in the game. McCovey will retire as of July 10th. So remember, McCovey and the Giants will be here when the Dodgers come off this road trip. And of course, we'll see Willie up at Candlestick before that. But he's going to call it a career as of the 10th of July. Boy, he was a great player. He certainly made his contributions, didn't he, to San Francisco and to Major League Baseball. Hey, you hate to see the the bright stars go out, but they all go. All right, Joel Youngblood goes back to center field. Claudel Washington back in right field in one piece, we're happy to report. Davey Lopes is standing at second with a double. And in a moment, Jay Johnstone will be coming up. Johnstone hitting 327. And he has become the right fielder now. Reggie Smith played in the second game the 8-7 win, the Dodgers beat Montreal. And then Johnston played against Montreal. And he played in the first two games, so here he is again. So Reggie Smith getting a good rest. He had asking Reggie before the game, what are you going to play? He said, I thought I was going to play today. He went down to the batting cage, swung the bat, and his back was hurting. So it figures that Reggie will rest again until tomorrow night. When the ball club is in the Astrodome. So here's Johnstone. Jay has a look at the first pitch outside, ball one. It was typical of Johnstone. Today was camera day, and the fans were on the field taking pictures of the Dodgers. And when Johnstone came out, instead of wearing a regular cap, he wore an umbrella hat. One of those things invented, I think, by Lou Brock. The pitch on the outside corner for a strike, one and one. So Johnstone, living up to his image as another Marx brother, and somebody's going to have a dandy picture of him wearing that umbrella hat. One and one to Jay, who is some hitter, batting 327, slaps it foul off third in the lower deck. One and two.
Today, the 22nd of June, and tomorrow will be an anniversary. Seven years ago tomorrow, the Dodgers started the infield that has been playing just about every day since. And the infield is out there today with Garvey and Lopes, Russell, and Say. After today's game, they will have played a full seven years together in the beginning of the eighth tomorrow night. Johnstone takes out five. And there goes the hat. So John Pistella finally lost his hat, which probably means he's finally loosening up. So that's one. Two and two to Jay Johnstone. Pistella out of a stretch. Looks at Lopes. Back with a curve ball. A fly ball to left field is going to be caught. Pistella lost his hat again. And Davey Lopes standing at second base. So two hats off with John Pistella and two out. And the batter Steve Garvey. on that collision out there in right center field. It was Joel Youngblood's foot that caught Claudel Washington across the mouth, cut his mouth slightly, and dazed him. But he's okay. Here's Garvey now. Takes ball one. There goes the hat. Ball, that's three hats and two out. One ball and no strikes to Steve Garvey. Hitting 281. Hats off John Pacella working for the Mets today. Now the 1 0 pitch on the way. In there for a strike. There goes the hat. You know, that's going to get you a little crazy after a while. Maybe they ought to let him pitch without a hat. they wear a visor. Or a diver's helmet. Something that might stay on. One and one to Garvey. The teller looks at Lopes. Pitch is low. There goes the hat. That's five hats now. So he's really loosening up. When he was working the law and Lopes, he didn't lose his hat at all. But now it's flying off. And as he says, when his hat comes off, he's actually, his mechanics are sound. Two and one, the count to Steve Garvey. Priscilla checking Davy Lopes, and the pitch is low, ball three. You realize how many times he has to bend over to pick up that hat? He's lost it six times now. And four straight. See, now Jerry's <laughs> counting six drops and four consecutively for John Priscilla. Pistella out of a stretch. You look at Davy Lopes, the three, one pitch, swung on and missed. There goes the hat at seven and five in a row. Three and two to count to Steve Garvey. Well, Willie Mays, of course, that was his trademark. He always lost his hat. Three and two to count to Garvey. Pistella out of a stretch. Garvey waiting, and the pitch fouled away, and the hat's flying off. You wonder sometimes, probably not, but whether the hat in flying off his head would be a distraction for the hitter. Dusty Baker was saying he doesn't like to hit three and two with the runners going because they distract him a little bit when they're running. Now, how about that hat flying off? Three and two to Garvey. We've got eight hats off now. The right-hander ready. Delivers fouled away. The hat's gone. That might be a National League record for hats lost on consecutive pitches. He has lost his hat nine times. And seven consecutive pitches his hat has flown off. Isn't this fun? Don't you just love it? Three and two, the count to Garvey. Here comes Priscilla. He delivers, swung on and missed, and his hat came off. So that ten-drop hat by Priscilla, he strikes out Garvey, he leaves Lopes, and at the end of an inning, the Mets two and the Dodgers nothing. John Stern, Jose Marino, and then Doug Flynn. Stern's catcher first baseman, although he would just as soon stay behind the plate. Hitting 298, so he's having a big year with the bat. Goals ready, delivers, and misses low, ball one. Stern's a catcher who can run. He set the all-time record for stolen bases with 25 in one season. John swings and pops it up. Daryl Thomas, sunglasses glistening as he looks up into the sky and makes the catch for the out. One away. 
You know, it is interesting when you talk about John Fisella, the Mets pitcher, and his hat flying off on every pitch. In the past, hitters have complained about a lot of things. Do you remember the night here where the opposing team complained because Don Drysdale was wearing a copper bracelet? He wore it because he thought it helped his an arthritic condition in his wrist, and they made him take it off. The pitch is low, ball one to Marino. And of course, years ago, they used to really raise pain with pitchers if they had torn undershirts. As far as the sleeves were concerned, they felt that was a distraction to the hitters. Pitch in there for a strike, one and one. So Jose Marino, waiting at the plate. Left hand hitting infielder has a look at the next one, ball two. Two and one the count to Marino. Marino is switch hitter, batting 273, but he doesn't play very much. He's had only 11 at bats. Two to nothing in favor of New York. And on the 2 1 pitch is a busted bat blooper to center. Rudy Law, one hands it on the dead run. Crack bat, that'll do it for Marino. And with two down, the shortstop today, Doug Flynn, the only Mets player to play in every game coming up. Flynn is hitting only 224, but no matter where he plays, which is mostly second base, he has done a marvelous job. Joe Torrey, very much impressed with his defensive abilities. That's why he's in there every day. Dave Gold delivers and gets the strike. Two to nothing. Maddox doubled with one out and four Del Washington homers. 2-0 New York. Back comes Goltz and the next pitch is low. The Dodgers with Garvey and Lope, Thomas and Say. So Russell getting a rest. One ball and one strike to count. Goltz comes back with a fastball, hit late and foul off first base on the second deck in the count one and two. Dusty Baker, Rudy Law, and the Iron Man, Jay Johnstone, in right field. Jay playing four consecutive games out there for Reggie Smith. Flynn waiting. John Fasella on deck. And the one-two pitch on the way, whack into right field. Base hit for Flynn. So Doug Flynn singles to right, and with two out, the batter is John Fasella. John Fisella has one hit and one run batted in this year. He's only had five at-bats. Well, John coming up. Two out, second inning, the Mets two and the Dodgers nothing. We ought to duck in a few scores and bring you up to date on what's going on around the league. Oh, what the Cardinals are doing to Cincinnati. It is 12 to 2 St. Louis now. The end of seven and a half. A parade of Cincinnati pitchers, Lacoste started against Vukovic. Montreal, San Diego, scoreless in the bottom of the second. Philadelphia leading the Giants 1 0. The end of an inning and a half. That's Carlton and Blue. That's a good matchup. Pitch hung on and missed 0 1. Tonight, Chicago, Atlanta, Pittsburgh at Houston. The Astros have won 14 straight in the dome. They've won 6 straight and 15 out of 17. It'll be Bibby and Nico. A bunt attempt is missed by Pacella, strike two. In the American League, 6 to 3, Boston leading California in the bottom of the eighth. 5 to 1, Oakland over the Yankees in the bottom of the eighth. 5 to 2, Baltimore over Seattle at the end of seven. Detroit beat Chicago 7 1 in the first game. 11 4, Cleveland leading Minnesota at the end of six. Pacella swings and misses. Kansas City 5, Milwaukee 3 at the end of five and a half. Toronto, Texas tonight. So the Mets get a base hit, and that's all. And at the end of an inning and a half, the Mets two and the Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the second inning, the Mets leading the Dodgers two to nothing. For the Mets, two runs on three hits. For the Dodgers, no runs, only one hit. That was a double by Lopes that almost proved expensive for New York when they had that collision. A little bit of a collision, anyway. Joel Youngblood and Cordell Washington. It's easy for me to say a little bit of a collision. I wish that Cordell would tell you it was a lot more than that. They're both okay, fortunately, and they stayed in the game. John Pacella will be pitching to Dusty Baker, Ron Say, and then Daryl Thomas. So Bill Russell gets a rest. Russell has missed three games. 
Reggie Smith has not played, so Reggie Smith has missed four. Of course, once in a while, Smitty figures to come into a game certainly as a pinch hitter. Steve Garvey has played in the ball, and he's the only one. Ron Say has only missed one. The Dusty Baker. Hitting 292, 16 home runs, 45 runs batted in. Baker hit one out last night, and he also had two singles, so he three for four, and he has really been eating up Mets pitching. Baker has five home runs against the Mets, and a dozen runs batted in. He takes low ball one. In fact, Baker's average against New York is 571. Steve Garvey has three home runs, five RBIs, and he's hitting 455 against the Mets. Strike to Baker in the count one and one. John Pacella pitching to Baker and leading two to nothing in the second inning. John Reddy in his 1-1 pitch on the way. A change, and it's hit up the middle. A base hit for Baker. He hits them all. He now has 13 hits against New York. That'll bring up Ron Say. Ron Say hitting 268. He has 10 home runs, 31 runs batted in. Say does not have an RBI against New York. He has only three hits, so they've kept him pretty quiet. The seller hands it aside. Baker takes his lead. And now John backs off the rubber. Mike Jorgensen holding the bag at first. The seller back up on top. Mets two, dodges nothing, bottom of the second inning. John Reddy in the right-handed delivers, and the first one low and outside, ball one. It should also be duly pointed out that the seller has not lost his hat now in this second inning for one reason or another. As they're losing it on ten consecutive pitches. Here's the 1-0 pitch on the way. And it's foul back, and that time Pacella caught his hat in midair. Is that a drop? We have to check with the score. If, okay, it is considered a hat drop if he catches it in midair. One and one to count to Ron Say. In his last game, no fooling. He lost his hat 27 times, and he's already done it 11 times today. Baker off the bag, Pacella out of a stretch. And the one-one pitch, that's low, ball two. Mm-hmm. He did it again. Two and one to say. The Mets had a one-out double by Elliott Maddox and then a home run to right center field by Claudel Washington to account for the two runs. The two-one pitch inside almost hit save. Ball three. Three and one. John Pacella and Dave Gold in the final game of the series with New York. Final game of his homestand. Now the 3 1 pitch to say is ball four. So, first and second, nobody out. Rube Walker, the pitching coach, is coming out. And Pacella just let his hat stay there on the ground while he went talking to John Stern. So two on, nobody out. Gerald Thomas, Steve Yeager, and Dave Gold coming up. Gerald Thomas playing shortstop today. Gerald hitting 265. The Mets are looking for Gerald Thomas to punt, but that is certainly open to question. If he punts, and even if he advances the runners, Yeager's hitting only 187, and then you have Gold. So, would you have Gerald Thomas bunting? And remember, he's a switch hitter batting left-handed. So, Baker and Say take their lead. Pacella out of his stretch, and Darrell is looking at ball one. And Pacella wants a new ball. He'll probably need a new hat very shortly. One ball and no strikes to count. out of his stretch. Another look at the runners. The 1-0 pitch. Swung on and missed. So he was not bunting. 1-1. One one. Jorgensen now goes back behind Say. Maddox, however, stays near the bag at third. 1-1 one one to Darrell Thomas. 2-0 Mets. 
Still waiting. Costello ready and delivers, and Thomas fouls it back, one and two. So that's the tip-off. The Dodgers are not expecting that much out of Yeager or Gold, so they have Darrell Thomas swinging away. Darrell hitting 265, and has a left-handed batter. Darrell is hitting over 300. One and two. Costello ready, set the right-handed delivers. Ground ball just foul down the line. So Thomas pulling it too much, and it's still one and two. A final score, it's over in Boston. The Red Sox six and the Angels three. So their two-game winning streak is clipped. One and two, the count to Gerald Thomas. That's two, Dodgers nothing. Bottom of the second inning. John Pacella. Out of his stretch, a check of the runners. And the one-two pitch, Thomas lifts his foul off third out of play. For you figure Philbert, you might like to know, you probably hate to know, but nevertheless we'll pass it along. John Pacella has now lost his hat 17 times. And we're in the second inning. One and two to count to Darrell Thomas. Pacella out of his stretch delivers, and it is swung on and missed. So Darrell Thomas is asked to swing away and strikes out. So Steve Yeager coming up. And of course for Yeager, that really is a blow to his pride to realize that with the tying runs aboard, they have Thomas swinging away, which is indeed a reflection on the way Steve has been going with the bat. And there's no way to get away from it. Yeager hitting 187. He does not have an extra base hit. And he has only four runs batted in. So Priscilla delivers, and the pitch is outside, ball one, one and all. One ball and no strike. Now the right hander ready, another look at Baker. Back he comes, and it's swung on and missed, one and one. One and one to Yeager. The inning started with Baker a single up the middle and stay walked. Thomas allowed to swing away, struck out. And Yeager up there, one ball and one strike. The next one to Steve outside, backhanded by Stern. Ball two, two and one. Joe Torrey is trying to tell Claudel Washington to move over more, a little bit more towards right center, and he does. Youngblood is questioning the bench as if to say, I'm all, am I okay? And evidently he is. He's playing slightly over in the left center. Two and one to Yeager. The seller ready and John delivers. High, ball three, three and one. Seattle with three in the eighth and two in the ninth. Beat Baltimore seven to five. Boy, it's a tough time for those two October clubs, huh? Baltimore and Pittsburgh. Three and one to count. The seller delivers and it's fouled away. reacting to a scramble above us on that foul ball. Well, what would you do? You have a catcher who's not hitting at the plate and a full count and one out and the run is going. If the catcher doesn't hit and the runners are caught, Gold starts off the next inning. Let's see. The runners do not go and the pitch is ball four to load them up. So Yeager gets a walk and that's a big break for the Dodgers to load the bases. And with one out, Dave Gold's the batter. Gold is a, a typical pitcher. He has struck out half the time. He would not appear to be much of a threat with the bat. And he comes up with the bases loaded. He has sacrificed four times this year. We bring that up if you're thinking about the possibility of a squeeze. So you have Yeager at first, Say at second, Baker at third with one out, two nothing Mets, and Gold takes the strike, 0 and 1. So the Dodgers left Lopes at second base in the first inning. Now they have a chance, Rudy Law on deck, Gold has a look at ball one, and they count one ball and one strike. Reading Stearns as the Dodgers take their lead. 1-1 one, one pitch to Gold. Ground foul outside of first, and he's examining the bat. He heard a sour sound. 
but evidently it's okay. One and two, the count. The Mets on a double by Maddox and a home run by Cordell Washington, leading two to nothing. The Dodgers trying to come back here in the second inning. Goals, it's a high hopper down towards short. Flynn on a bounce to Marino, and that's all. As Jaeger makes sure Marino can't throw to first, and a run scores. So Dave Gold gets his first RBI of the year. Tying run is now third with two out, and Rudy Law coming up. Yeah. It was not a double play ball, but Gold does not run well. It was a high bouncer in the hole, and Flynn had to run in and do his right. But still, if Yeager had not been able to get his legs between Marino's legs and tilt him a little bit, they might have been able to juggle, uh, double him up. 2-1 to one Mets in the second, and now here's Rudy Law, fly to center in the first inning. The seller delivers low, ball one, one and oh. He stands at the plate today, began the afternoon hitting 269. He looks at a fastball, low, ball two, and they get somebody up down there in the Mets bullpen. Can't really see the pitcher, you can just see the catcher handling him. 2-0 to Rudy Law. Goal to first, Jorgensen behind him, stay down the line from third. And the 2 old pitch in there for a strike, 2-1. call because while warming up the pitcher, the ball got loose from the Mets bullpen. Florida Washington will have to retrieve it. Two and one. Right-handed John Fisella out of a stretch in the 2-1 pitch. is a ground ball into right field. A pitch. They scores to tie it up. Goal stopping at second. Story is going out to the mound to talk to John Pacella. Remember, Rube Walker had been out there talking to him. So now Torrey is heading for the hill. John Pacella this year had made four previous starts without a complete game, and of course he's coming out now in a 2-2 tie. Coming out as well with runners at first and second. The official count for John Pacella, he lost his hat 23 times in an inning and two-thirds. And Mark Bombach will be coming in. So John Pacella coming out of the ball game. After the Mets gave him two runs in the first inning, the Dodgers get him back in the second. He tied with two runs and three hits. The only surprise being it's the Mets that have a home run. That was a home run by Washington with Matt at the board in the first inning. Well, Jerry has already done yeoman work in counting 23 hat drops. You've never seen anything like that, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't. No, it's really it's wild. Yeah, I figured it out. That's the, the, the whole game he's dropping about 120 times. And I know Jack Lang told us he dropped it 27 times the last time he pitched, but how many innings did he pitch then? I mean, he, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's get to the scores. All right, Benny. St. Louis is now leading 12 to 2 over Cincinnati with the Reds batting in the bottom of the ninth inning. Montreal nothing, San Diego nothing in the third inning. Philadelphia one to nothing over San Francisco in the fourth inning. Carlson against Brew in the announcement earlier that Willie the Cubs announced his retirement as of July 10th, which brings him right up to the All-Star break. Chicago and Atlanta play tonight. Pittsburgh and Houston tonight to wind up their series. The Astros have won 14 straight at home, 6 straight overall, 15 out of 17. And our final score ends, the Cardinals 12 and Cincinnati 2. Vukovic gets the win and Lacoste takes the loss. American League final, Boston over California 6-3. It is 5-2, Oakland over New York, ninth inning. Seattle beat Baltimore 7-5 with 3 in the 8, 2 in the ninth. Detroit won the first game of a doubleheader at Chicago, 7-1. It is 
Cleveland over Minnesota in the eighth inning, and the Indians are playing pretty good ball. Milwaukee three, and now Kansas City has jumped ahead and leading six to the Cardinals 12, and Cincinnati two. Vukovic gets the win, and Lacoste takes the loss. American League final, Boston over California six to three. It is five to two, Oakland over New York ninth inning. Seattle beat Baltimore seven to five with three in the eighth, two in the ninth. Detroit won the first game of a doubleheader at Chicago seven to one. It is eleven to four, Cleveland over Minnesota in the eighth inning, and the Indians are playing pretty good ball. Milwaukee three, and now Kansas City has jumped ahead and leading six to three, playing in the eighth inning. Toronto plays at Texas tonight. So Mark Brown back. Coming in now to replace John Pacella. We're in the second inning. All tied. Four play. Let's go back to them. All right, Jerry. Mark Bombag is the kind of a fellow the hitters would say. He gives you a comfortable collar. He's not the kind of fellow to overpower or terrify a hitter. A little of this or a little of that. And he makes it stand up. He is three and one. He's completed one of eight starts. He's out of Portsmouth, Virginia. Lives in Somerset, Massachusetts. He spent last spring training with the Milwaukee Brewers and then went out to Vancouver, and he was minor league player of the year. He won 22 games at Vancouver, including a, a one-hitter against Hawaii. Basically a breaking ball pitcher who was originally signed by the Red Sox. Spent six years in the Red Sox organization, and the Brewers got him as a free agent, and he was a quiet. He gives you a comfortable collar. He's not the kind of fellow to overpower or terrify a hitter, a little of this or a little of that, and he makes it stand up. He is three and one. He's completed one of eight stars. He's out of Portsmouth, Virginia, lives in Somerset, Massachusetts. He spent last spring training with the Milwaukee Brewers and then went out to Vancouver, and he was minor league player of the year. He won 22 games at Vancouver, including a, a one-hitter against Hawaii. Basically a breaking ball pitcher who was originally signed by the Red Sox. Spent six years in the Red Sox organization, and the Brewers got him as a free agent, and he was acquired in a deal with Milwaukee. Bombach delivers, and Lopes hits it up the middle. Behind the bag goes Flynn, but he can't get it. Lopes, who is lumbering, is coming around third, and he's out at the plate. He can't run at all, and they sent him in. Dave Ghost is thrown out easily. I tell you, not only does he run slowly, but he's a wide runner. He rounded third by way of the Dodger dugout. So Dave now is going back in the dugout sadder and wiser, as are the Dodgers. So the Dodgers in the second inning get three hits and two walks for two runs. And at the end of two, the Dodgers do the Mets do. A 2-2 tie, Joel Youngblood making a throw from the outfield to get Dave Gold to the plate. For Youngblood, he had seven assists in his first 23 games, and he has just picked up his tenth assist. That means he becomes one of the better throwing outfielders in the league. Joel Youngblood. Nice play. Of course, as we said, when you run like Gold, you don't stand a chance. So Youngblood got it in there, and Dave was done. He was also even. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, three hits for the Mets. The Dodgers going out on the road to play Houston and San Francisco. They will be home in a week to open up with San Diego and San Francisco. And we sure hope you pick up your tickets and make a date to be here when they get home. Let's go to the third. A 2-2 tie. And for more play-by-play, here's Jerry Doggett. Maddox and Washington now, the top of the order for New York to start it off. Youngblood grounded out the shortstop his first time up. Youngblood has been quite involved in this game. He and Washington bumping together in the outfield, and now Youngblood throwing out Ghost trying to score for second base on the ground ball single to center by Lopes. So Youngblood steps in, hitting 244 with four home runs, 27 RBIs. Ghost delivers a breaking ball down low, one ball and no strikes. All even now at two apiece. Petrello works an inning and two-thirds, goes out, giving up two runs and three hits. Here's the pitch, breaking ball, that's too high, ball two, two balls and no strikes. Joe Youngblood out of Houston, Texas, that's where the Dodgers are heading tonight. They'll be in Houston on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, off day Thursday, or the Giants next weekend. There's a pop-up foul behind home plate, 
Yeager coming back for it near the box. Beats has room. He's got it. The young blood fouls out the Yeager one away. And the batter will be Maddox, who doubled the left field and scored on Washington's home run. So Maddox is back for his second trip. Elliott playing third base, doing a good job there. One home run, 16 RBIs, and a 268 batting average. So the Reds were clobbered today by St. Louis at Cincinnati. So the Cardinals take two out of three in that series, and the Reds now stand 34 and 32. They are four games behind the Dodgers and seven behind the Astros. So the Reds, who jumped out of that fast start, picking on Atlanta in the first two weeks of the season, now really been playing poorly. With a fly ball to center, Law comes jogging in. Rudy there waits and makes the catch for the out. So Maddox, the fly ball to shallow center. Two down, Washington, the batter homeward into the right field stands his first time up. So Washington, his first home run is in that. Cordell was born in Los Angeles, grew up in the Berkeley area. Top of the third. A 2 2 tie. Dave goes into the windup and is picked outside low for ball. One ball and no strike. Goats gave up a double and a home run in the first inning and a two out single to Flynn in the second. Now the pitch. Lift outside ball, 2-2 two, two and all. Left hand batter, Claudel Washington, who was hitting only 059. The home run for Claudel was only a second hit as a Met. It's a swing and a miss. Scoreboard reached the count of one and two, but I think it's the other way around, two and one. We'll see. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve in there, strike two, and it's two and two. Two to the count. And the curve is called strike three. The Gulf gets them out in order, one, two, three in the third inning. And the score at the end of two and a half, Dodgers two, the Mets have two. go to the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Johnstone, Garvey, and Baker now. Lope was the last batter, single to setter, and on the play. Goals was thrown out at the plate. So Mark Bombach now warming up with John Stern. Good homestand when the Dodgers get back. They will take on San Diego on Monday, June 30th. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday with Thursday being a day game. Then on the 4th of July, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, it'll be the San Francisco Giants. They will have the All-Star break. And following the All-Star break, the Dodgers will entertain Houston here for two games. The dates on those will be the 10th and the 11th before the Dodgers take off on a long road trip. That long road trip will go to San Diego, Chicago, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis. Jay Johnstone coming on. Fly to left field. Fairly deep his first time up. Jay hitting 327. to Johnstone, breaking ball high, one ball and no strike. Our new board in left field, which will be named Diamond Vision, will be ready for the All-Star game. Maybe might have a preview during the next homestand, just before the All-Star game, if we get it all the lights hooked up. Kind of anxious to see that. It will resemble a huge television screen in left field. Here's the 2-0 pitch to Jay. High again, ball free, 3-0. Three John Pacella gave up two walks in the second inning. That led to his downfall. Bay walked and scored. Yeager walked. Loaded the bases. Now the 3 0 pitch on the way. Inside ball four, and Johnstone opens the third inning with a walk. So base on ball. Garvey is due up next. Struck out his first time up. Jay playing in his 738 consecutive games. Batting 281, 15 home runs, 52 runs batted in. Now the arm stretch and the look. Bomb back set. Johnstone going, hit and run, ground ball to short. Clean to second base in time, and Johnstone's going to holler about the call there. And here comes. 
around Tommy LaCourt out to holler. Umpire Davidson at second base ruled him out on a hit and run play. And boy, I'll tell you one thing, that was a close call. As Jarvie hit the ball to shortstop Flynn, who fed the ball in to Marino, and Johnson sliding in there. And Jay thought he was safe. And out is the sort of argue about the call. And Johnstone spun around and threw his hands in the air at Pat Davidson. But Davidson said, no, he's out. The sort of now picking up the call. And on the instant replay, it was very, very close. You take another look at it. As Garvey hits it right back to the shortstop, breaking toward the bag. And Flynn going to Johnstone. Looked like Johnstone was on the way up. And the sort of comes running off. Round of applause for Tommy. He lost the argument. And Pat Davidson ruled that he was out at second base. Left field. All right, here's Baker at bat. Well, that was a close call. After the play at second base, Johnson was on top of Marino. He had no chance to make a throw. And the ball popped out of his glove, but he was in the act of turning to try to get away a throw. Here's a pitch to Baker. Breaking ball for a strike. Dusty. Single his first time up. Baker hitting a 282 coming in. Boy, he has been blazing hot. He's at safe announced 14 out of 17 and has 25 for 61. That's a better than a 400 clip. Back one count to Baker. Ball game tied. We're in the third inning. Strike one. Here's a step to look in the pitch on the way. Baker takes high for ball, one and one. One ball, one strike, one out, one on. Dodgers played hit and run, and Garvey got a hot ground ball to short. And the Mets got the decision at second. Baker fouls one over the backstop screen, strike two. Beautiful day here in Southern California. Temperature in the 80s. Not a cloud in the sky. Sunbathers out at the ballpark today, getting a chance to acquire a little suntan. Good crowd. Well over 40,000 for the game today. Here's the one and two look. The pitch to Baker. Foul back over the top again. And it holds at a ball and two strikes. One and two to Dusty. Baker back in. Drive you away from first base. And bomb back to second New York pitcher. Takes off and finds his turns. Now has the one he wants. And Baker tired of waiting. Back out. The Astros do not play until tonight. Baker leans under a fastball. High two and two. The Dodgers should be in the air by the time the Astro game gets underway or about that time. So by the time the Dodgers land in Houston, the game should be ending. Here's the 2 2 look. Garvey dancing off first. Go. Six. Slow. Turn. Throw to second base. And he's out at second base. But Garvey out trying to steal. A straight steal. Baker didn't offer the pitch roll. 2 and 2 count to Baker. So turns with a good throw down to Marino. And Garvey is caught running. Garvey has stolen four. And now he's been caught three times. All right. A 3 and 2 count to Baker. Now the look and the pitch. Breaking ball, too low. Ball four and Baker is on. Second walk. And here's Ron Say at that. Ronnie walked his first time up and came around to score the tying run. I stay in the batter's box. Baker away from first two out. Bomb back ready. And Ronnie looks at a curve. One ball and no strike. The Mets have fallen into fifth place in the division. One game behind Chicago. Final score, Oakland beat New York 5-2. That snapped an Oakland losing streak. And a Yankee winning streak of nine in a row. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball outside. But the Yankees have a big lead. They are seven and a half ahead of Milwaukee. 
Kansas City has an even bigger lead, eight ahead of Chicago. Montreal leads Philadelphia by a game and a half, and Pittsburgh by two and a half, and Spade takes low, ball three. Here it is. Started out to be a promising inning, and then things went sour when Johnstone was ruled out on the fourth play, and then Garvey out trying to steal. 3-0 count. Just to give him a green light. Too high, ball four, and Spade is on with a walk. That's the third walk of the inning. Here comes Drew Walker out to have a little talk with his pitcher, Bombach. Well, it's a leisurely, lazy Sunday afternoon, and kind of glad of that. The pace of the ball game has been just that. We played an hour and ten minutes, and we're only in the third inning. At this rate, the Dodgers will not get to Houston by the time the Astros and Pirates finish their game. Walker's the mound. The Mets stay over in Los Angeles tonight. They go to Chicago, do not play tomorrow. So they will not go out to Chicago until tomorrow. So they'll have another night here in L.A. Kyle <laughs> Walker goes on back. Here's Dale Thomas coming on with two on, two out. Thomas struck out his first time up. Batting 265, playing shortstop today to give Russell a rest. Now the look in the pitch. Darrell swings at a breaking ball, strike one. Must be tough for a guy like Darrell Thomas to stay, to stay sharp at the plate. He's in and out of the lineup a lot. And he's always playing different positions. But the toughest thing would be to keep the bat sharp. The 0-1 pitch. Line drive, right field, caught on the fly. Marino raced over to haul it down. So Thomas did a line drive headed for right, and the second baseman over there to flag it down. Cadero sent it, but to no avail. No run, no hit, and for the Dodgers, they leave two. The score at the end of three innings, Dodgers two, the Mets have two. Two as Dave Gold gets set to work to the Mets now in the fourth inning. Four play, let's go back to this. All right, Jay. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. Two runs, three hits for New York. Steve Henderson will start it off. The left fielder will be followed by Mike Jorgensen and then John Stern. So it's the heart of the New York lineup. Henderson grounded out in the first inning to Ron Say. Started the day hitting 323. Steve Henderson. Henderson last year was on the disabled list, severely spraining his left ankle in a game at Pittsburgh. And he was on that list from the end of July until the middle of September, so that really ruined his season. But even so, in 98 games, he proved his point. He hit over 300. The pitch to see, taken inside, ball one, one and all. Against left-hand pitching last year, Henderson hit over 400. Last night against Royce, he hit the ball hard twice. Steve takes a breaking ball for a strike, and the count one ball, one strike. Henderson had the mark of a good ball player on him. He was second to Andre Dawson in Rookie of the Year honors. He fouls the pitch away. One and two to count. So the deal for Tom Seaver, Seaver has gone and is getting a little older and having some problems. And meanwhile, the Mets now have Steve Henderson, Pat Zachary, Doug Flynn, and Dan Norman. There's a looper off the glove of a leaping Davy Lope. Henderson cracked his bat, but he was strong enough to just nudge it into center. Ropes made a great effort. Got his fingertips on it, but that's all. And Davey very gingerly walking back to his position. Well, let's see if Ropes is all right. He shook himself up on that play. The batter now, here comes Tommy Lasorda, and Ropes waves to Lasorda and Bueller, it's okay. But he certainly 
showed cause for concern, the way he was walking back to his position. Mike Jorgensen, who hit the grand slam against the Dodgers this year, hitting 282. Mike, of course, is just happy to be playing. Go to first, not in time. Jorgensen was beamed by Andy Hassler. That was last May. He was playing for Texas, and Hassler was pitching for Boston. And it was a severe beating. In fact, they brought him back three days later as a pinch hitter, and he went into convulsion. The doctors discovered a blood clot on his brain, and they said, that's enough. You don't play again for a while. He didn't get back in the uniform until the 1st of July. Mike Jorgensen. And he's playing well this year, hitting 282. Mike's a pro. He's been up since 1968. Jorgensen waiting. Henderson off the bag. A pitch out and no action. Final score, Kansas City beat Milwaukee 7-4. to four. And Oakland beat the Yankees 5-2. to two. So Billy Martin, who finally wore the Yankee uniform in Old Timers Day yesterday, puts on the Oakland A's uniform today and manages them to the victory. Throw to first, Henderson diving back to the bag, and it was close. Steve has stolen nine bases. A 2-2 tie in the fourth inning. Darby holding a corner on Henderson, and Dave Gold trying to win his fourth. And there goes Henderson. The pitch is fouled away, and that'll roll right into the Mets' dugout. So Mike Jorgensen on a hit-and-run play fouled it off. One and one to Jorgie. John Stearns on deck. Jorgensen's biggest year in the big leagues was 1974 when he was playing for Montreal. He hit 310 that year. Throw to first, Henderson goes back in standing up. However, that was the exception. Mike's lifetime batting average in the big leagues is 245. Throw to first, and close that time. Henderson, on a balk, is going to go to second. So the Dodgers, with a balk call against Dave Gold. I don't know whether he leaned towards home and then threw to first, but it was called. So the Dodgers being plagued by a balk. You don't see that many of them, and yet the Dodgers now have been charged with seven balks. Of course, it has really plagued Rick Sutcliffe. He has been charged three times with balks. First time Goltz has been guilty. So Henderson is balked to second. One ball and one strike to count to Mike Jorgensen, a 2-2 tie in the fourth inning. Lasorda hollering out the plate umpire at Montague. One and one to count to Mike Jorgensen, nobody out. Jorgie trying to get a ball to full now to at least get Henderson over to third. And goes out of a stretch. Dave delivers, and a sinker is lifted into left field, so Henderson has nowhere to go. Dusty Baker right there to make the catch. So on a fly ball to left field, one away. Runner still at second. That's such a big play in baseball, the ability or inability to get the man over to third. And the batter, John Stern. Stern popped up in the second inning. John 0 for 1. Hitting 298. Colts on and off the rubber, watching Henderson take his lead, and now Dave is back on the rubber, and Stern's waiting. On deck is Jose Marino. The pitch to Stern's in there for a strike, going one. John has given up thinking about home runs. He's going for average, and he sure made it pay. At 298, he's right there. No home runs, 26 runs batted in. Now the strike one pitch to John Stearns inside. A bluff by Yeager sends Henderson back to the bag in a hurry, even though there wasn't anybody covering. One and one, the count to John Stearns. Dodgers two, Mets two. We're in the top of the fourth. One out. Goal ready, and Big Dave works his hitter off speed and inside. Ball two. Two and one. Come on, Rick Sutcliffe. 
will go against the Houston Astros in the beginning of a three-game series with Houston. The Astros play Pittsburgh tonight. The 2-1 pitch on the way. Breaking ball, but it's high. Ball three. Three and one. The Mets had Maddox double and Washington homer in the first inning. The Dodgers eventually getting two runs in the second inning to tie it up. Now in the fourth. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Breaking ball, low. Ball four. So Stern scores a walk. That'll bring up Marino. Hey, a feast of... Fourth is just around the corner. Here's Marino. Fly to center in the second inning. Switch hitter batting left-handed, and he fouls it back. Going one. Marino, one for one, hitting right-handed. Two for 11 as a left-handed hitter. He just doesn't play. And he's getting a chance to play today. They rest to Veras. Jose de los Santos Marino from the Dominican Republic. The strike one pitch is low. One and one. Originally signed by the Phillies, they tell us he was a star basketball player in the Dominican. He's played second, third in the outfield in the minor league system for New York. Marino takes the strike in the count one and two. Final score, Cleveland 11, Minnesota 6. The Indians had 19 base hits. Marino waiting. Henderson at second. Stearns at first. One out. A 2-2 tie in the fourth. And the sinker is whacked to right field and there's nobody there. That's going to go in the corner. Johnstone coming over to finally play it. In comes Henderson. Here comes Stearns. The relay gets by Garvey. So Stearns scores easily. And Marino is in the third. And it is 4-2 New York. Jose Marino knocks in two as he triples in the right field corner. Four to two in favor of New York, and with one out, the Dodger infield has to play up. Doug Flynn is the batter, and the Dodgers have to worry about a squeeze with Flynn. Right-hand batter, and he backs off and takes a strike. Flynn single to right field in the second inning. Flynn has struck out less than 5% of the time, so he's a guy who makes contact. Now the strike one pitch. He swings and hammers it to center, tagging up as Marino, the catch by law, and he won't even make a play. And Marino scores easily. And it is 5-2 New York. So Dave Gold here in the fourth inning gave up a looping single to Henderson and walked him to second. A one-out walk to Stern, and Marino put the slug on him for a triple and two runs. Now Doug Flynn, who makes contact, picks him up. So it's a three-run fourth, and the Mets are leading five to two. So Gold has earned run average is five, has allowed his five right now. And the pitch to... The hitter Bombach is inside, ball one, one and oh. Bombach takes the strike, one and one to count. Mark Bombach. As a hitter, he has two hits in 13 at-bats. Now the one-one pitch on the way, swung on and missed, one and two. Five to New York in the fourth. Dave Gold. Into his windup, and the one-two pitch is swung on a miss, and that'll do it. However, in this case, a walk, single, triple, and scoring fly ball for three. And at the end of three and a half innings, Mets five, Dodgers two. Five runs, five hits for the Mets. Two runs, four hits for the Dodgers. The so Mark Bombach, three and one with the league, who came in to pick up with John Fisella. Now has a chance to pick up a win along the way. Steve Yeager, Dave Gold, and Rudy Law will be the hitters. Bombach has served up 10 home runs 
In fact, he served up nine home runs in eight games at one stage. And as the players call them, they were really dingers. They were hard hit, long, towering line drive home runs. Yeager takes outside ball one. So much so that they dusted off an old nickname that was used years ago in Philadelphia. They had a pitcher by the name of Boom Boom Beck. Is the 1 0 pitch on the way, and it's hammered down the left field line in the corner, and Steve Yeager will have to double base hit. Making a turn and going to second, and there's nobody covering second base to the throw. There's no threat, and Steve was in there standing up with a double. For Steve Yeager, his first extra base hit of the year. That gets us back to Boom Boom Beck. In all Baker Bowls, and this goes way back in Philadelphia. Baker Bowl was a small ballpark with a tin fence. And when they hit line drives up the fence, it really made a resounding noise. And apparently Beck gave up a lot of them. Ghost is trying to punt and misses strike one. And consequently, they put the tag on him. Boom, boom, Beck. So when Bob Beck came up to the Mets and gave up all those home runs in the string, they called him Boom, Boom, Bomb Beck. Well, he didn't like that at all. The strike one pitch, if one attempt is missed, and the count on two. Well, he's a nice kid, and they finally decided, yeah, that's not fair to put that kind of a tag on him. So it's Mark Bombach, not Boom Boom Bombach, and he's three and one with the lead. Yeager at second, nobody out, and the strike two pitch to Dave Ghost. Bombach delivers a butt in the air, and it's caught by Bombach. So Ghost is unable to get the punch down, one away. coming up with Yeager at second base, and Rudy's going to take a little time to allow Gold to get back to the dugout. Law has flied to center and single to right, one for two. Five runs, five hits for New York, and for a club without power, with their five hits, they have a double, a triple, and a home run. And the Dodgers, the team with power, the Dodgers have two doubles. Five to two New York. Bombach hands it his side, now out of his stretch. Ed Glenn begins to throw in the bullpen, perhaps, or maybe it's Pete Falcone. We'll check. Pitch of the plate to strike, 0-1. And, and it's Glenn. 0-1 the count. Bombach out of his stretch, another look at Jaeger. Now Mark ready and delivers, and a check swing on a change is over for a strike, and the count 0-2. Law can't believe it. Back out and appeal, but only briefly. Mark Bombeck has spent a long time in the minor leagues. He started in 1971. He spent over seven years in the minors before he even had a shot briefly in the big leagues. Went back down. And here he is. You have to admire his tenacity. The strike two pitch, Law pulls it foul outside at first. It's still 0-2. In fact, he was even out of baseball for a while, working in a clothing factory. Made a lot of calls around. And Milwaukee said, well, we'll take a look at you, but you're going to have to go to double A ball. He said, hey, I'll go to A ball. Well, they sent him out to double A. And he fought his way back to the big league from Holyoke to Spokane and then Milwaukee. Now the strike two pitch, a half swing, slow over to second base. Picks up there, and the throw is a wild throw. So Yeager will score, but all the while, Rudy Law was digging down the line. And he stopped at first as John Stern retrieved the ball. So Marino on a slow roller, making the off-balance throw, and threw it away. So Davey Lopes will be coming up. The Dodgers get a big break. Check playing and Law reaches first. And for the Mets, they continue to be plagued by defense. That's another error for New York. They have made 62 errors. And this is their 63rd game. We'll see if they gave Law a base hit on that. The pitch to Davey Lopes is high for one. It might have been an infield single on the error, allowing Yeager to score. We'll see. Now the 1-0 pitch coming up to Lopes instead of throw to first. Law diving back to the bag. Five 
strike to three in favor of New York. One ball and no strikes. It'll be an error all the way. No hit for Rudy Law. Here's the 1-0 pitch instead of throw to first. Law diving back. The count. So Law at first base on the up. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Lope. Breaking ball outside. Ball two, 2 and 0. Marino on this little road trip for the Mets is trying to balance his books. He has five runs batted in, but he has committed three errors on this trip. Here's the 2 0 pitch to Davy Lope. Bomb back delivers, and it's in there at the knees. Davy can't believe it. He takes a little walk. Hot on the call. Two and one. Ropes trying to cool off by looking at Danny Ozai. To a double, and with one out, the error by Marino lets the run come over. It is five to three, New York, and Law trying to see an opening and get a jump down there at first. Bob back, set, checking. He doesn't go, and Lope swings, doesn't get it, two and two. right at the 2.30 mark at the start of the game, but he's had a double and a single today to go two for two. Law again inching off, held out by Jorgensen. Bomb back ready. And the 2-2 pitch, Law hits a drive to right field and pretty deep. Washington, however, has a play on it, and Law halfway to second comes back. So Law to drive to right, two down, and Jay Johnstone the batter. Johnson flying to left and wide. Jay Johnson, 0 for 1. Bomb back, heaves his eye, now looks in to get a sign. Right into turns, throws to first, Law diving back. So Rudy showed no signs of trying to go while Lopes was up there. Immediately increased his lead and just did get back. Now that Johnstone is the hitter. Although it would seem that he would be trying to steal with a right-hand hitter up rather than with a left-hand hitter up. So Rudy off the bag. Bomb back checking him. Now the pitch to Johnstone outside. Law has stolen 22. He has been caught five times. The 1-0 pitch to Johnstone. He has a look at a strike, 1-1. One one. Law was thrown out last night by Trevino. 1-1, one one. the count to Jay Johnstone. Two out, fourth inning, 5-3 Mets. Steve Garvey on deck. Throw to first again, Law diving back. The Mets scored two in the first. The Dodgers came back with two in the second. The Mets scored three times in the fourth, and the Dodgers have come back with one here in the bottom half. Bomb back, ready, looks at Law. The 1-1 one, one pitch to Johnstone, high and outside, ball two, two and one. And hold everything. Joe Torres is way a minute. You know, we were talking before the ball game about certain things, and he's going right to the bullpen. He's decided he doesn't want Bomb back pitching to Johnstone. Joe was saying if you're around baseball long enough, there are certain things that happen right away. He said he brought in a relief pitcher the other day, and the relief pitcher made his first warm-up talk to the plate, the very first one. And Tory said, I don't like him. I know he has to pitch to a hitter, but he's coming out. And they said, why? And he said he looked to him as if he was trying to throw from center field rather than from the mound. Joe, of course, spent many years studying pitchers behind the plate. So he suddenly didn't like Bombay while he was working on Johnstone. So they'll go to Glenn, and while the left-hander walks in, here's Jerry walking up. All right, Vinny. Ed Glenn, G-L-Y-N-N. Left-hander is 6'2", 180-pounder. Been pitching professionally since 1972. will pick up a two-ball, one-strike count. Now, if Jay Johnstone should walk and eventually score, that would be charged to Bombay. Two and one the count. 
Rudy Law standing at first with two out. Five three Mets in the fourth. And Glenn delivers, and the fastball is swung on and missed. Two and two. Glenn checking with John Stearns. Rudy Law walking off the bag. The left-hander plants the foot. Leans on his right knee to get a sign. Law again hops off, and the 2-2 pitch to Jay Johnstone is a tapper down to second as Jay lost his bat, and Moreno throws him out. So the Dodgers, thanks to an error, get a run. One hit, leave a man, and at the end of four, Mets five, Dodgers three. Through four innings, the Mets five runs, five hits and one error. The Dodgers three runs, five hits and no errors. Dave Gold hanging in there, hoping his mates can catch up. The Mets got two in the first, three in the fourth. The Dodgers scored two in the second and one in the fourth. A crowd of over 42,000 today on camera day. The Mets have drawn 405,000 at home, and they are about 30,000 ahead of last year's attendance. The Dodgers have done three times that. Now, that's staggering. Over 43 in the house. Oh, make it 43 pays. 43, 298. And almost 45 in the house. So 43,298. But it's remarkable. The Dodgers three times the attendance of the Mets. Oh, there's a lot of reasons. And certainly, first of all, the Mets televised all their home games. The Mets have drawn 400,000 at home. The Dodgers have gone a million three. The first pitch to Joe Youngblood over for a strike, 0-1. Of course, when you talk about New York, you're talking about, well, in the area, certainly 11 million people. The strike one pitch is high and outside, one ball, one strike. The Dodgers have drawn more at home than the Mets have drawn for the whole year home and road. The 1-1 one, one pitch is popped in the air into shallow right field. Johnstone coming up, fighting the glare, and makes the catch. The young blood, a fly ball to right, one down, and the batter will be Elliot Maddox. Maddox hitting 268. Maddox doubled in the first inning. Bounced one over third and down the line, and then Cordell Washington not only picked him up, Washington hit a home run. 5-3 Mets. They are trying to get a victory in California. They lost two in San Francisco, two in San Diego, and the first two games of this series here. And Dave Gold, breaking ball over for strike, on one. Maddox, right-hand batter, the strike one pitch, down and away, one ball, one strike. Five, three, New York, top of the fifth inning. The one, one pitch on the way is a fastball inside, ball two, good one. The Mets at home are two games above 500, they're not bad at all, but when they go out on the road, they are better than two to one the wrong way. The 2-1 pitch, a bunt. It's a good one. I don't think he'll have a play. No play. All Gold does is pick it up. So Elliot Maddox jumps one beautifully for his second. Hit his two for three. And the batter will be Cordell Washington. Half a dozen hits for New York. Washington homered and struck out. One for two. Waddell checking with Chuck Cottier, coaching at third. Joe Pignatano over at first. Now Dave out of his stretch. Checks first, comes to his hitter, and Washington fouls it away. On one. Oh, and one to Claudel Washington. 5-3 New York, top of the fifth inning, one down. Rolls out of a stretch. Dave delivers, and there's a drive into right field and deep. Back goes Johnstone, a way back home run. 
Boy, that is historic. For the Mets to hit two home runs in a game, and for one man to hit both of them, that is indeed bad news for Dave Gold. And it is seven to three Mets. Bordell Washington has hit two. Gold has allowed seven. And the Mets leading seven to three. Washington with four runs batted in. Steve Henderson coming up has grounded out and singled. So the Mets now have had three home runs against the Dodgers this year. The slam by Jorgensen and two by Washington. Dave Gold, a picture of dejection now to give up seven to New York. Joe Beckwith in the bullpen and the pitch a breaking ball strike. If you remember against Bob Welch, the Mets got three in the first inning and then he didn't score again and they were blank last night. So they had 17 scoreless innings until goal. And they've scored seven times against him. And there's a drive down the right field line. Johnstone, the ball's over his head, hits the box seat railing, cams back to right center where Rudy Law picks it up and Henderson has a triple. Had a bunch single, and then Washington for the second time put the slug on Gold, and now Steve Henderson triples into the right field corner. It is seven to three, New York, and Mike Jorgensen will be the batter. Jorgensen grounded to third, fly to left, and here comes Red Adams. I don't ever remember Red Adams going out and taking a pitcher out. Red invariably goes out to try to counsel and to soothe the stroke of pitcher who's in trouble. And it is Lasorda who brings the hook. So Adams talking to Gold. The Dodger infield is up. Jorgensen, 0 for 2, trying to pick up Henderson. The Mets enjoying a four-run lead. 7-3. So Adams now leaves. The crowd doesn't like it. Joe Beckwith has just really started to warm up. So one reason Adams was sent out there was to delay, to stall, to give Beckwith a little time. And now they'll take a little more time as they walk Jorgensen intentionally. So four wide ones to Mike Jorgensen. Here's ball three. Jack Lang tells us that it is not the first time the Mets have had two home runs in a game this year, although I'm sure the folks in New York think it would be. But it is the first time the team is hit for the cycle. They've had six times as they walk Jorgensen intentionally. So four wide ones to Mike Jorgensen. Here's ball three. Jack Lang tells us that it is not the first time the Mets have had two home runs in a game this year, although I'm sure the folks in New York think it would be. But it is the first time the team is hit for the cycle. They've had singles, doubles, triples, and home runs. They have a double by Maddox, triples by Marino and Henderson, and two home runs by Washington. Now Yeager out to the mound with Davey Lopes to talk to a disconsolate Dave Gold. 7 to 3 New York and John Stern, 0 for 1 coming up. For Ghost, one of his problems today, the long fly ball, which is certainly not part of a sinker ball pitch. And now here comes Lasorda, so it's all been a delaying tactic. To give Joe Beckwith time to warm up to commend the pitch to John Stern, even to letting Ghost give the intentional pass. A lot of times you bring a relief pitcher in to give the intentional pass just to give him four warm-up tosses from the mound. But in this instance, they thought it would be better to just have Beckwith keep throwing and then to be brought in. So for Dave Gold, you know how hard he is trying. He has not won a game since the 11th of May. 
and it has just been a disastrous series for him. His longest stint, he got into the seventh inning once, but most of the time he's been chased by four innings. And for whatever reason, and no doubt the, the human reason is the best, trying too hard, Goltz is out of there, and Joe Beckworth is coming in. For Dave, this was his seventh start since his victory in St. Louis. And remember, when he won that game, he only went five and a third. So the big guy out of Minnesota, quiet, easy going. And it's just been a tough year for him as he walked off. So Joe Beckwith will come in to pick up the pieces. Seven to three in New York. And while Beckwith loosens up, here's Jerry. Okay, video reminder, the Dodgers' Rex home stand will feature four special days. Thursday afternoon, July 3rd, is a businessman special with a 1 o'clock game against the Padres. Friday night, July 4th, is fireworks night with a spectacular fireworks show to follow the Dodgers Giant game. Sunday, July 6th, is Old Timers Game Day with a great cast of baseball greats. And Friday night, July the 11th, is List Fan Night with the Astros, the opponent for a 5 10 game. So make your plans to be with us for all of these great days. Dodgers have a lot going on in the next homestand. On the scoreboard, a lot going on. St. Louis beat Cincinnati 12 to 2. Philadelphia now has come up with two to take the lead over San Francisco 4 to 3 in the last of the seventh. Carlton against Blue. One nothing Montreal over San Diego in the seventh inning down south. Chicago and Atlanta, Pittsburgh and Houston play tonight. The Angels lost. Boston was the winner, six to three. Oakland beat New York five to two. Seattle seven to five over Baltimore. Detroit seven to one over Chicago. First game, four to two. Second game, fifth inning. Cleveland eleven to six over Minnesota. And Kansas City beat Milwaukee seven to four. Toronto, Texas play tonight. Okay, more action back to this. All right, Jerry. Joe Beckwith, who is three and zero with a fine earned run average of two, he's made seventeen appearances. And he is asked now to somehow stop the Mets who are on a rampage. The Mets scoring seven times, that's unusually high for them anyway. And they've done it with power, which is startling for them. Doubles, triples, and a couple of home runs by Claudel Washington. John Stearns, who has popped up and walked, the right-hand hitting catcher coming up with runners at first and third. Steve Henderson down the line from third, and Mike Jorgensen at first, Garvey now, who was off the bag, comes back to hold Jorgensen. And Stearns at the plate. John, pretty fast for a catcher. In fact, he's probably the best running catcher in the big league. Was hitting 298, he's 0 for 1. The pitch to Stearns, high, ball 1. So the Dodgers, with a four-game winning streak, and they were trying to go into Houston on a high note. You had better go in there with a high note. The Astros who play tonight have won 14 straight at home and 6 straight against the league. Here's the 1-0 pitch to Stearns. Big chopper down to Gerald Thomas. He goes to Lope. He goes to Garvey State on the run score. So the fourth play is 6-4. Henderson scoring. And that makes it 8-3 New York. So Dave Gold charged with the eighth. And now the batter is Jose Marino. Can't close the books on Gold yet. Marino, the switch hitter, fly to center and triple to right. Beckwith hands it aside with two down in the fifth inning. So the Mets back to back three run innings. Marino takes low, ball one. Marino's triple cashed in two back in the fourth inning. Eight runs, eight hits, one error for the Mets. Three runs, five hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Now the 1-0 pitch on the way. Back with set and back on the rubber. Turns held on by Garvey. John taking his lead, and the pitch to Marino. He has a look for a strike. Turns is still running well. He has stolen seven out of eight. One ball and one strike to count to John Stern. Beckwith, ready and delivers. Marino fouls it back, one and two. 
the Dodgers will have Garvey, Baker, and Say in the bottom of the fifth inning. Up in Montreal, the Canadian Open, Bob Gilder, whose other tournament victory was at Phoenix, he won. So the Canadian opener history, Bob Gilder the winner. One and two to count. Marino waiting. And Beck with a long look in, now Joe is ready. Here's the one-two pitch, they pitch out, Stern's not going anywhere, and they count two and two. Beckwith again checking Yeager. Now Joe ready, there goes Stearns, and the pitch is hit off the hands and a fly ball to shallow right. Johnstone makes the catch. Boy, they had Jay on the move, running down home runs and triples, but he handles this fly ball. So it's another three-run inning for New York on a single triple home run, and at the end of four and a half innings, that's the key, Dodgers three. There's more on the retirement of Willie McCovey. McCovey of the Giants, the leading left-handed home run hitter in National League history, announced his retirement Sunday from baseball after 22 seasons. The 42-year-old McCovey's retirement will be effective July 10th, and he has asked the National League to place him on the voluntary retired list. McCovey, who has a 10-year personal services contract with the Giants, will stay on with the club as a batting instructor and public relations director. McCovey had planned on retiring at the end of this season, but said his decision was hastened by the fine play of rookie Rich Murray, who the Giants recently brought up from the minors to replace injured Mike Ivey at first base. Says Willie, the decision is something I've been thinking about all season. I said someday a phenom would come along who would move me aside. Well, that phenom, Rich Murray, has arrived. I'm just happy I lasted as long as I did and that I managed to accomplish a lot of things in my career. During his career, McCovey belted 521 home runs, tying him with Ted Williams for eighth place. Four and a half innings, the Mets eight and the Dodgers three. Let's pause for a station identification. Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Down he goes. 
Dusty Baker coming up. Dusty singled and walked. He's one for one. On deck, Ron Say. Glenn standing back of the rubber, now head up on top. Looks down the barrel to get a sign. And the left-hander works Baker. A little high, ball one. 43,298 saved today, so Cameron Day, a big success. Beautiful day to come on and let the Dodgers and the Mets roll around. Bouncer up along third, foul Danny Ozark. Has a bare-handed attempt to get away. One and one. The Mets scored twice in the first. The Dodgers tied it in the second. The Mets scored three in the fourth. The Dodgers came back with one. And then the Mets came back with three more of their own. So they're sitting on top of a five-run lead. 8-3 in the fifth inning. The 1-1 one -one pitch to Dusty Baker. Very high. Ball two. Good one. Ed Glenn, the third New York pitcher, trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. Head into the windup and the 2 1 pitch to Baker in there for a strike. Dusty trying to help the Dodgers extend a four game winning streak. But they're really going to have to do some scrambling. 8 3 New York. The league leading Astros play Pittsburgh tonight. And the 2 2 pitch is popped up. John Stearns in foul ground, but Jorgensen, who's wearing sunglasses, has the easier play and makes the catch. So Mike Jorgensen handling the foul ball. Two down, and Ron Say the batter. Ron Say walked twice. Scored a run in the second inning on the single by Rudy Law. Say hitting 268. Glenn waiting for save. Pace of the game, very slow. A languid afternoon in the ballpark. Glenn into the windup. Left-handed delivers, and the fastball in there for a strike. Going one. Of course, it is particularly tough. You're a professional ball player in this day and age. You play night after night after night after night. So you learn to eat at a certain time. Your reflexes are tuned to hitting under the light. Strike one pitch outside, one and one. And then that Sunday afternoon game. They have a tendency to get a little ragged. I guess in a sense that's one little edge that the Chicago Cubs have when they're home. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball high, ball two, two and one. The fact that your chemistry is thrown a little bit out of whack after playing every night. 8-3 New York, bottom of the fifth inning. Glenn into the windup and the 2-1 pitch. High, ball three. Three and one. Say has a look at Danny Ozark. Gerald Thomas, who is giving Bill Russell a rest, is on deck. Eklund checking with John Stern. Now the three-one pitch is popped in the air. Stern's trying to come back after it. He comes to the base of the screen and makes the play. So the Dodgers are out in order for the first time today. And at the end of five, the Mets eight and the Dodgers three. Through five innings, the Mets eight runs, eight hits, and one error. The Dodgers three runs, five hits, and no errors. Joe Beckwith on the hill now for Dave Gold. And the Mets will have Doug Flynn, followed by Ed Glenn, and then Joel Youngblood. Beckwood having to come in and pitch to John Stearns and Jose Marino to get the last out in the fifth inning. Doug Flynn single to right and had a scoring fly ball. One for one. So normally the Mets second baseman and they move him over to short to spell Frank Tavares. Joe Beckwith ready, delivers, and the pitch is lifted foul or first. Garvey coming over, but the ball is going to go behind the Mets dugout and the count on one. One strike. 
That's Lynn on deck, swinging right-handed. He's a left-hand pitcher. Ron Fay about even with the bag at third. Flynn waiting in the strike one pitch. Punch to Garvey, who backhands it and brings it over to the bag himself. So, one away. The Dodgers and the Mets in their sixth meeting of the year. The Mets swept three in New York. The Dodgers had visions of sugar plums and sweets. They won the first two. But the Mets have come back now to take a commanding 8-3 to three lead. Ed Glenn. As a pitcher, he has been in a bunch of games, but as a batter, he's only 0 for 2. For Glenn, left-hand pitcher, right-hand hitter. And Beck was ready, delivers, and the pitch over for strike, 0 and 1. It is the rare good ball player who throws left-handed and hits right-handed. Remember, we've talked about that before. The pitch outside ball, too. There are a lot of right-handed throwers who hit left-handed. But most left-hand throwers, if they're good hitters, they also hit that way. 2-0 the count to Ed Glenn. Now the 2-0 pitch on the way. Big chopper down to shortstop. Gerald Thomas waits for the hop, then fires to Garvey in time. Two down. So Beckwith has retired four in a row, and the batter will be Joel Youngblood. Two down, and Joel Youngblood grounded out, fouled out, and flied out. He's 0 for 3. The Youngblood, the center fielder and right fielder, he would just as soon stay in right field. Beckwith into the windup, and the pitch to Joel fouled away. 0-1. No balls, one strike to Joel Youngblood. Two out, top of the sixth inning. The Mets eight, the Dodgers three. This is a going away day. The Dodgers heading for Houston and San Francisco. The Mets, of course, hitting the road. They go to Chicago and Philadelphia before getting home. The pitch over for a strike. 0-2 to Youngblood. The Mets are not in any hurry as far as today's game is concerned because they're going to stay over and fly out tomorrow. But the Dodgers with a game tomorrow night in Houston, they want to get there tonight. For a strike two pitch is chased and missed. Down he goes. So Beckwood has restored order. Joe has come in to retire five in a row, but it might be a case of locking the door, etc., etc. At the end of five and a half, Mets eight, Dodgers three. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Mets eight runs, eight hits, and one error. And the Dodgers three runs, five hits, and no errors. The Dodgers, of course, have pulled out a few dandies. And most notably, the other night when they were trailing seven to one. And eventually would want to win that game eight to seven against the Montreal Expos. That game appeared to be a lot for Montreal, but then Steve Rogers, if you remember, had to come out with a tender elbow. And after that... The Dodgers got a run in the fifth and then they had it a half a dozen in the seventh to win it eight to seven. Well, that was the beginning of three miraculous games plus the shutout by Royce last night. So the Dodgers with a four-game winning streak. And if they are going to have their patented come from behind rush, they're going to have to start making noises soon. They're down 8-3, bottom of the six. Daryl Thomas, Steve Yeager, and Joe Beckwith or a pinch hitter. Down in the bullpen, Charlie Huff is listening up. Daryl Thomas, playing shortstop, has struck out and lined out. He's 0 for 2. Daryl will turn around now and bat right-handed against Ed Glenn. The left-handed delivers, and Daryl swings, doesn't get it. The count 0 and 1. Almost 45,000 in the ballpark with 43,298 days. But I just go over the 1,300,000 mark today. Strike one pitch to Gerald Thomas. Good breaking ball. 0 and 2. And hard downer on the outside part of the plate. John Stearns and the crowds behind the plate. 
Now the strike two pitch on the way. It's foul up along first, trickling over near the Mets dugout. So it's still 0 2. Mike Jorgensen, Jose Marino, Doug Flynn, and Elliot Maddox. An outfield of Steve Henderson, Joel Youngblood, and Cordell Washington. Balls and two strikes to Daryl Thomas. The pitch fouled away again. Fastball up and away. Daryl just taking a swipe at it, fouled it back. Rick Sutcliffe will open up against the Houston Astros in a very big series for the Dodgers. Dodgers trailing by three for the moment. If they lose this one and the Astros win tonight, it's four. Another foul ball. So Daryl Thomas making Glenn work. For the Dodgers, opening with Sutcliffe because of the fact that Don Sutton is going to miss a turn after 220 some odd trips to the hill. That full groin muscle has Sutton forced to miss a turn. Here's the strike two pitch high to the screen. Ball one, one and two. to Darrell. Eight to three, New York. Bottom of the sixth inning. Dodgers were even in the game at the end of the second inning, but since then, the Mets have pretty much broken it wide open. The one-two pitch curveball popped up. Mike Jorgensen is calling the first baseman halfway to second to make the catch for the out. So Thomas pops it up, one away. has walked and doubled. That double a big one, his first extra base hit of the year, and he eventually came around to score a run. So Steve in there now against Ed Glenn. The left-hander into the windup. Fastball is swung on and missed 0-1. Eight runs, eight hits to the Mets. They've had a double, two triples, and two home runs. Strike one pitch. Jaeger looks at a fastball low and away. One ball, one strike. On deck is Joe Ferguson to bat for Joe Beckwith. So you can just about pencil in Charlie Huff to be pitching the seventh inning. The 1-1 one, one breaking ball is swung on and missed. So Glenn was pretty good stuff, especially that big overhand curveball. One and two. John Pistella, Mark Bombach, and now Ed Glenn. The Dodgers with Dave Gold and Joe Beckwith. Gold gave up all eight runs and eight hits. Jaeger chases a pitch and strikes out. Two down. And the Dodgers have not had a hit since Jaeger's double. And here is Joe Ferguson batting for Joe Beckwith. Fergie hitting 148. <laughs> Ferguson with two home runs, five runs batted in. Joe with his dramatics the other night, swings at a curveball and doesn't get it. Two out, six inning, Mets eight, Dodgers three. Ed Glenn into the windup. Now the strike one pitch. Half swing on that breaking ball. They check it first. Swing, says Vargo. And the count 0-2. Ed Glenn looks down to John Stern. The left-hander delivers, and he pounced it in front of the plate. It goes all the way to the backstop, ball one. One and two to Joe Ferguson. So two streaks on the line. The Mets trying to snap a seven-game losing streak. And the Dodgers with a four-game winning streak up in the air. Glenn checking, Fergie waiting, and the left-hander comes back to him. Good breaking ball. See you later. Oh, he's got a good one. Boy, you write that down. Ed Glenn, he can break them off. At the end of six, Mets eight, Dodgers three. Only a total pull-up. 
Hey, at the end of six, it's eight to three in favor of the New York Mets. On the scoreboard, the Cardinals beat Cincinnati 12 to two. Montreal to San Diego, nothing in the bottom of the eighth inning. Four to three, Philadelphia leading the Giants in the top of the ninth. And tonight, Chicago, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, and Houston. Over in the American League, Red Sox six, California three. Oakland five, Yankees two, so that snapped a nine-game winning streak for New York. Seattle seven, Baltimore five. Detroit beat Chicago seven to one. In the second game, Detroit leads four to two in the bottom of the seventh. Cleveland beat Minnesota eleven to six. Kansas City over Milwaukee seven to four. And tonight it'll be Toronto and Texas. Don't forget the Dodgers hit the road now after this game, but their next homestand will feature four special dates. Thursday afternoon, July 3rd, a businessman special. That's a 1 o'clock game against San Diego. Friday night, July 4th, naturally, fireworks night. A spectacular fireworks show to follow the Dodger Giant game. Sunday, July 6th, is all time game day. A great cast of baseball greats. And Friday night, July 11th, wristband night with the Houston Astros in town for 5-10 games. So make your plans now to be with us for all of those great dates as we turn the corner in the month of July. Right now, let's go to the seventh, the Mets eight, the Dodgers three, and for more play, here's Jerry. Okay, Vinny, Charlie Huff comes on now, the third Dodger pitcher. Goldsworth four and the third, gave up eight runs and eight hits. Beck with an inning and two-thirds, no runs, no hits. Charlie Huff a winner in his last outing. Charlie's earned run average is coming on down. That's down to 5.5. He has won one and lost three. Here's Maddox with Washington and Henderson to follow. Charlie ready to pitch. Knuckle ball outside to Yeager. One ball and no strike. One over the count, seventh inning. The Mets, eight runs, eight hits. The Dodgers, three runs and five hits. Knuckler is taken high for ball. Two and all. For Huff, this is his 18th appearance of the year. Two and all. Charlie set again, reading a sign, now the pitch. And he fires a fastball in there to Maddox. Two and one. Maddox has doubled and had a bunt single. Cardell Washington on deck. They play Maddox, slide it to the left, gap him in the right center. Up looking in, hands on his knees. Two and one the count. And the pitch on the way. Knuckle ball. Swing and a miss, strike two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Once again, Huff taking his time to get the sign. And the 2-2 pitch on the way. Knuckleball is full on and missed strike three. Maddox goes down swinging, chasing the knuckleball. So Huff comes in, strikes out the first man he faces. Here's Cardell Washington coming on. Cardell came into the game with one base hit and 17 at-bats for the Mets. And he's had two home runs and three trips today. So two of his three hits have been homers. He's the first Met to hit two home runs in a game this year. And the last Met to do it was Missouri last June 30th, 153 games ago. Knuckle ball is inside. One ball and no strike. Now the look and the 1-0 pitch. Knuckle ball and a high fly ball deep in the right field corner. Johnstone going for it. Way back. This ball is gone. Hold on for Cardell Washington. He has this three in the game. So Cardell Washington hammers one out of here. His third home run. And he is not noted as a home run hitter, but he's going to get royal treatment when he arrives at the bench. And the crowd is giving him a hand. It's been a long time since we've seen three home runs in a game, but of course it happened a couple of days ago in the American League. Buddy Potek hits a three for the Angels. But now, Cardell Washington deposits this one in the lower box seat just to the right of the foul pole down the line. So for Washington, three home runs this afternoon, and it's nine to three. 
in favor of the Mets. Fardell will probably not get another time at battle, though, if the Mets get a few men on. He might get one more shot at it. In his second turn at bat today, he struck out. So Washington hammers one out of here. He's going to become a legend in New York if he keeps that up. He's had four hits and 21 at bats and three of them home runs all today. Charlie comes high to Henderson and it's two balls and no strike. Dave Kingman on June the 4th, 1976 against the Dodgers had three home runs for the Mets. And there's a bouncing ball to shortstop. Up with it comes Thomas. Throws in time to get Henderson for the second out. That's a funny note. Washington has three home runs today. And as Jack Lang says, if he gets two more, he will tie for the club lead, which is five. Jorgensen has played in 46 net games. Washington playing in his seventh game. Here's Jorgensen at that now. There's a flash. It's the first base flag. Goes high in the air to Garvey. He will run to the bag, and he can't beat the... Jorgensen, and Trump was a little late covering. Had Charlie gone over and covered the bag, they would have had a play. But the ball hit the bag, went high in the air. Garvey had to wait for the ball coming down out of the air. And then tried to outrun Jorgensen, who slid into the bag at first base. Huff perhaps the sound that the ball hit the bag and bounced in the air was a little tardy getting over there. So Jorgensen gets a base hit, hitting the first base bag. And all Garvey could do was wait for it to come down. And then he had no chance to outrun Jorgensen. All right, two out, turns at bat. Three home runs for Cardell Washington this afternoon. Here's the look and the pitch on the way. Low and outside for ball. One ball and no strike. Turns is 0 for 2 with a walk. Score to run 9 to 3, the Mets leading. Here's the pitch to John. Knuckle ball for a strike. That is the fourth home run allowed by Huff on the year. One on the count. Here's the pitch. A bouncing ball down the third baseline. And it's still a one and two count. And Dave, of course, also had three home runs here in the game as a member of the Chicago Cubs, so he's done it twice. Seems like Stargell and McCovey have also done it in this ballpark. There's the knuckleball for strike three, and Stearns is out to retire the side. So Huff gets two strikeouts, but in between, a home run by Washington. One run, two hits, one left on the score at the end of six and a half. Left nine, and the Dodgers have three. In Toronto, a Patrick Sanzay not third state triumph on the can M. Okay, we go on to the last half of the seventh inning. Crowd standing and singing take me out to the ball game. The Dodgers start off with Law, Lopes, and Johnstone. I guess left-hander Ed Glenn. Nine to three, the Mets are out in front. Mainly because of five runs batted in and three home runs by Cordell Washington. He's the third National League player this year to do it. Terry of Montreal had three in the game against Atlanta in an 11 inning game. Johnny Bench had three in a game down at San Diego. And we mentioned Kingman doing it twice here in Dodger Stadium the last time was in their next inning ball game. He had a 15 inning game. But he did it in the nine inning game for the Mets July 2, 4th, 1976. Yeah. Rudy Law coming on, and Law today has one hit to drive in a run. It was on on the He's one out of three. All of this for Washington today, and you might recall.
called it early in the game. In the first inning, in fact, after he hit his first home run, he and Youngblood had a slight collision in center field. And for a little while, it wasn't. It was a question of whether Washington could stay in the ball game or not when he got hit in the foot, in the face by Youngblood's foot. Fastball is going inside to Rudy Law. One ball and no strikes. Ed Lynn, the third New York pitcher. The Dodgers have used three. Gold, Breckwood, and Huff. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. Inside for ball two. Two balls and no strikes.
who will probably stay in the game and play right field, replacing Johnstone now. Here's Glenn Stitch on the way. Line drive. Left to the field, face up. Here's one in, walks out the hole. The ball is traveled by Young, but the ball stays at third base with the ball comes to far behind.
This could develop into a big inning if Garvey can keep it alive because next on deck is Baker, who's been really hot against the Expo, uh, the uh, Mets. Garvey hits a high foul off first base down to the stands and out of play. Strike two. Brown is three and five, four and run average, and the Dodgers now trying to keep it going. One in, two on, nobody out. Garvey at bat. Open three, struck out twice. Here's Allen Step. The look now, the pitch on the way to Steve, a swing and a miss, strike one. Garvey came into the game hitting 281 with 15 home runs and 52 runs batted in. This could develop into a big inning if Garvey can keep it alive because next on deck is Baker, who's been really hot against the Expo, the, the uh, Mets. Garvey hits a high foul off first base down to the stands and out of play, strike two. So Allen quickly gets Garvey in trouble. Strike two to Garvey. Allen up with the arm. So look in the pitch. Drive the right field face hit. Here's one close to score. Jaeger to follow. Two down. 
So Allen really has come in and slowed it down. He gave up a hit to Garvey and a scoring five ball to Baker, but he's getting the out, which is what the Mets want. All right, Thomas waiting. Here's the pick to him. Pass ball low, one ball and no strike. Darrell has one home run and five runs batted in for the year. 26 hits, five doubles. Darrell playing shortstop today, giving Russell a rest. 9-6. Pitch to Darrell. A swing and a miss. One and one. One ball, one strike. Yeager is on deck. If Thomas gets on, of course, the on-deck hitter, Yeager would represent the tying run. One and one to count. Again, as the look by Allen, the pitch all the way to Darrell, taken on the outside corner for a strike, and it's one and two. Good fastball, whistled in there by Neil Allen. One and two, Allen has become the Mets specialist at short relief. He's on here in the seventh. Here's the one-two look in the pitch. Swing and a miss, and down goes Darrell, swinging to retire the side. So Allen comes in and restores order. The Dodgers get three runs on four hits and leave them in. The score at the end of seven innings of play. The Mets nine, the Dodgers six. Jose Marino will start it off. He'll be followed by Doug Flynn and then Neil Allen. And Charlie Huff ready with a 9-6 scheme now on the line. And the knuckleball outside, ball one, one and oh. Mets with a seven-game losing streak. The Dodgers with a four-game winning streak. And we've reached the eighth inning. The next one a strike in the count one and one. When the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the eighth, they are due to use Yeager, then Huff, and then Rudy Law. The pitch of the plate is a ground ball to Garvey. He'll walk it over himself, one away. So Marino goes one for four. He tripled in two runs and then scored himself, so Marino has been one of the differences. Frank Tavares now goes jogging down to the Mets' bullpen. And Tavares figures to see action at short, and Doug Friend will go back to where he normally plays, second base. But right now, Doug Flynn singled, had a scoring fly ball, and grounded out. So Flynn one for two. Charlie... Turns now and knuckles the first one low and it gets away from Jaeger. Ball one, one and all. Oh. Ed Montague, the plate umpire. Neil Allen out on deck. The Mets led two to nothing, but the Dodgers got even in the second inning. Then the Mets have led ever since. Five to two, five to three, eight to three, nine three, and now nine six. Flynn fouls this one back into the crowd beyond the auxiliary scoreboard and they count one ball and one strike. Nine runs, ten hits for the Mets, including triples by Moreno and Henderson, a double by Maddox, and two home runs by Claudel Washington. Here's the 1-1 one -one pitch. Poked on a line, one-handed by Davey Lopes. A little sinking line drive that Lopes caught just about off the top of his left shoe. And with two out, Neil Allen coming up. Neil Allen, as a hitter, has one hit in ten at-bats. So the right-hand batter at the plate. Nine to six New York, two out on the eighth inning. Charlie Huff, the third Dodger pitcher, knuckles one over for a strike. Gil Beckwith pitched very well, did give up a home run to Cordell Washington in the seventh inning. Knuckleball is swung on and missed 0-2. Dave Goltz was charged with eight runs and eight hits in four and a third inning. Strike two pitch outside. Jaeger on his knees to block it. One and two. So the Dodgers down nine to three, trying to make another patented come from behind charge, and they've closed it to nine six. Knuckleball is whacked to left field. Baker on the dead run makes the catch. A couple of line drives for out. The Mets are done in the eighth, and at the end of seven and a half, the Mets nine, and the Dodgers six. The Mets now, with Frank Tavares at shortstop, after going down to the bullpen to play catch quickly, and Doug Flynn moves over to second. 
So in the eighth inning, nine to six New York, and the Dodgers will go to the bench. That means Rick Monday, Gary Thomason, hitting for Steve Yeager and Charlie Huff. Monday came off the bench the other night in the eighth inning against the Mets and hit a long fly ball to right field. It had a chance to go out, but it was caught. That was a game that Dusty Baker finally won with a double to score the tying and winning run. So Monday will start it off hitting for Steve Yeager. Monday becomes the third Dodger pinch hitter. Guerrero singled and Ferguson struck out. And now here's Rick. Monday hitting 214. He has a pinch hit home run to win a game for the Dodgers this year. And he's four for 17 coming off the bench. Alex Trevino is now at third base for the Mets. For Elliot Maddox. And there's a punch by Monday. Good punch. Quick charge it throws. Just got it. Oh, is it close. And the Dodgers arguing, but it's history. Hold on Monday. And he was just nipped. And, of course, that's a play Marino could not have made. So Joe Torrey made the switch just in time as Doug Flynn made the bare hand pickup and his throw to first just ahead of Monday's arrival. So the defensive maneuvering by Torrey has outmaneuvered the offensive switch by the Dodgers. One away. Now here's Gary Thomason. Gary Thomason hitting 237. He has five hits. Good for five runs batted in as a pinch hitter. So Neil Allen, thanks to a big play by Flynn, has one out. And Thomason swings and misses. So with Trevino at third, Tavares at short, and Flynn at second. Judd Flynn makes a big play. Thomason takes the strike 0-2. Jorgensen, Flynn, Tavares, Trevino, Henderson, Youngblood, and Washington in the outfield to pitch outside. John Stearns behind the plate, and Neil Allen on the mound. Here's the one-two pitch coming up. Allen delivers, and there's a high chopper wide at first. Jorgensen left the bag, so Allen comes over and handles the throw. So Mike Jorgensen to Neil Allen. Two down in the eighth inning. And Rudy Law coming up. Rudy Law. The play by Doug Flynn is not only a very good defensive play, but it seems to have taken the steam out of what momentum was building there in the seventh inning. The Dodgers were buried 9-3. They scratched back for three to get reasonably close. But after Flynn made the play, you quickly have two down, bottom of the eighth, and here's Rudy Law. Law is two for four. Rudy had three hits last night. So Rudy at the plate, two down. On deck, Davey Lopes. Nine, six Mets in the eighth. Allen's fastball is hammered to center for a base hit. hits in the two games, back to back, and of course one was time in the fourth inning on that check swing, when Marino was unable to handle it and threw it away, he was on on an error. So ten hits for the Dodgers, but they're trailing by three runs. On deck is Guerrero as Davey Lopes gets in. And the Mets are signaling to Trevino to look out for a bunt from Lopes. Neil Allen delivers on the inside corner for a strike, going one. Davey doesn't bunt very often for a hit. He bunted the other night to sacrifice and bunted so well that he got a base hit. But he is not, let's say, a Tavares who is a threat to bunt. Strike one pitch to Davey Lopes. He takes, and that's a little high. One ball, one strike. Two out in the eighth inning, nine to six Mets. Nine runs, ten hits for New York. Six runs, ten hits for the Dodgers. 
And Neil Allen, right foot on the rubber, looks in to get a sign. Now the 1-1 pitch on the way. Neil checking, comes to Lopes, and the breaking ball is on the outside corner for a strike. One and two. Davies had his first big day in quite a while. He's had two doubles and a single. So three for four for Davy Lopes. Allen ready. Another look at Rudy Law and the pitch to Lopes. Fastball high. Ball two. Two and two. Each side with ten hits, but the difference, the Mets have the Sox. They've had three home runs by Claudel Washington. They've had triples by Henderson and Marino, and they had a double by Elliott Maddox. The 2-2 pitch, the ground ball is short. Tavares flips to Flynn, and they get the force on Law, and the Dodgers settle for the base hit. But it was a pretty big play, that defensive play by Doug Flynn on the front by Rick Monday. And at the end of eight, Mets nine, Dodgers six. In the ninth inning, Bobo Castillo comes out of the Dodger bullpen to be the fourth Dodger hurler. It was Dave Gold, Joe Beckwith, Charlie Huff, and now Castillo. Batting ninth will be Castillo, and behind the plate, Mike Socia will go in the Jaeger spot. gave up eight runs. Beckwith allowed one. Huff did not allow any. Nine runs, ten hits, and an error. Six runs, ten hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Youngblood will start it off. He's 0 for 4. Youngblood, the center fielder for New York. And Castillo ready and delivers. Fastball drilled to right field, but Guerrero comes up and makes the catch right off his left hip. One away. Frank Tavares. The shortstop, who was in the number two slot, will be coming up in the spot occupied by Elliot Maddox. Maddox had a single and a double and scored twice. So here's Tavares, and of course on deck is Claudel Washington with three home runs. The pitch over for a strike. Washington hit two home runs against Dave Goltz, each with a man aboard. And then he hit the home run against Charlie Huff in the seventh inning. Here's the strike one pitch, a high bouncer charging it is Thomas, gloves it, throws, and gets it. When the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the ninth inning, they have Guerrero, Garvey, and Baker. And now here's Cordell Washington, three home runs in the game. Cordell, of course, who knew Golds from the American League, renewed their acquaintance with two home runs. And then he nailed Huff. The one time they got him, Gold struck him out back in the third inning. Left hand hitting Cordell Washington and Castillo's first pitch over for a strike. Going one. Mets nine. Dodgers six. Top of the ninth inning. Castillo strike one pitch. Outside and high. One ball and one strike. Mike Socia handling Castillo. For a 1 1 pitch on the way. Screwball swung on and missed. 1 and 2. Cordell was kicked in the mouth in the first inning. Lopes hit a double between Youngblood and Washington. Youngblood went into a sliding sit down attempt for a catch. Washington, coming from right field, dived head first. And Youngblood's right foot caught Cordell in the mouth. But after a while, both outfielders were okay. Washington continued in the game, and he's hit three home runs. He takes inside at the hand, ball two. Two and two to Washington. Henderson on deck. Nine, six, New York. Castillo, feet together, checking Socia. 
half out already in the 2-2 pitch. High, ball three. So Cordell Washington has had a big day, and he has one last shot on a 3-2 and two pitch. Castillo delivers, a bouncer over the mound, over second, in his center field. So Cordell Washington comes up with his fourth hit. Three home runs and now a single. And the batter, Ken Henderson. So for Washington, who had just joined the Mets, he had only had 17 at-bats over six games. He now becomes a member for two. Steve Henderson grounded out and singled tripled and grounded out. So Henderson two for four. To repeat in the ninth inning, the Dodgers have Guerrero, Garvey, and Baker. Castillo leaning on his right knee to check a sign. The Mets now have 11 hits. The Dodgers have 10. Washington off first and goes. Henderson fouls it away. Deep in the lower deck. on that hit and run play fouling it off and cracking the bat he'll have to get another so time out for the moment nine runs 11 hits one error for New York six runs 10 hits no errors for the Dodgers and if there had to be a difference in one man it would be Cordell Washington with three home runs Henderson with Mike Jorgensen on deck making his slow time back up to the plate. As we mentioned earlier, the Mets are not leaving. They stay overnight and then leave noon tomorrow. The Dodgers have a plane to catch immediately after the game to fly to Houston. 0-1, the count to Steve Henderson. Castillo ready, another check of first. There goes the runner, the pitch outside. Socia's throw is laid and in the dirt. And trying to make a backhand stab and pick up of the ball, Lokes hurt his left hand a little bit. He tried to short hop it and reach backwards into the sliding Washington, and maybe got chewed up a little. It'll be a stolen base for Claudel Washington. One and one to count to Steve Henderson. Ball game moving beyond the three hour mark right now. And remember, after this ballgame, Japan and the USA College All-Stars in their second game. The Japanese boys won yesterday 5-2. One and one to count to Steve Henderson. Castillo leaning in to get a sign. Now Bobo straightens up. Looks back at Washington, and the 1-1 pitch to Henderson is swung on and missed. The Japanese and American All-Stars play here. They'll also play two games in Omaha. They play another game in Anaheim, and they'll finish up at Dado Field at SC. So they've got a lot of baseball playing to do. One and two to Steve Henderson. Castillo at the belt. Bob O'Reilly double-checking. Now he delivers inside at the hand. Two and two. The USA college team, quite a few of their number in the Dodger bullpen taking in the last inning looking through the fence they put uniforms they wore red tops yesterday and they're using blue today Henderson drills it foul into the lower deck in the left field corner so Steve is still there and they count two balls two strikes the Mets scored two in the first three in the fourth and three in the fifth all of those at the expense of Dave Gold added one more in the seventh inning. The Dodgers scored two in the second, one in the fourth, and three in the seventh to make a little noise. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Castillo ready. Bobo delivers high. Ball three. So he went three and two to Washington, and Cordell singled up the middle. And he comes right back three and two to Henderson with two out. Henderson, Steve back up there. Nine 
9-6 Mets, top of the ninth inning with two out. Castillo out of a stretch. you will look at second, and the 3-2 fastball is popped up. Davey Lopes pulls down the shades and signals that he has it, backs up some more, and makes the catch. So they leave Washington at second base. And at the end of eight and a half innings, the Mets nine and the Dodgers six. Well, we've come to the bottom of the ninth inning at Dodgers Stadium. 43,298 paid today. They have seen somewhat of a slugfest with the Mets doing the slugging. Three home runs by Cordell Washington, Elliot Maddox a double, Steve Henderson a triple, Jose Marino a triple. And they piled up 11 hits for nine runs. The Dodgers six runs on 10 hits. The Dodgers have had three doubles by Davy Lopes, Steve Yeager, and another one by Davy Lopes. So for the Dodgers, They've had three come-from-behind victories in this four-game winning streak. They're going to have to really come up with a miracle now in the bottom of the ninth, down by three. And Neil Allen, the number one relief man for New York, ready to go to work. Pedro Guerrero came off the bench to single for Jay Johnstone and drive in a run in the seventh inning. Guerrero will start it off. Allen into the windup and delivers. Fastball in there for a strike, going once. Guerrero, Garvey, and Baker. The Dodgers have used Guerrero, Monday, Ferguson, and Thomason as pinch hitters. Strike one pitch to Pedro. is a drive into deep left center field. Back for it goes Youngblood. This one is off the wall. Picked up by Henderson and into second base goes Guerrero with a double. Talk about having a good young hitter sit around. Guerrero is hitting 423, and he's two for two today. That is the 11th hit for the Dodgers, the third hit off Neil Allen. So Guerrero bangs the board and might have hurt himself a little bit. Manny Mota's going out there to see if Guerrero is all right. time Guerrero hurt himself, he had hurt his left leg, and Lasorda starts to come out of the dugout, he's intercepted by Ozark, and Guerrero waves again with his right hand as if they don't come out, I don't want any fuss, I'm all right, but Mota is out there, and now Ozark is coming out, and I think Danny's going out there as if to say, look, if you don't feel 100%, come out of here, Guerrero says, all right. going out to see for himself along with Manny Mota. It was Guerrero's left hamstring that acted up. And he apparently felt it tight as he rounded first base. So with nobody out, Guerrero doubles to open up the bottom of the ninth inning and the Dodgers want to make sure he's 100%. And they have decided he is not 100%. And Bob Welch will run for him. Bob Welch will run for Pedro Guerrero, and all Guerrero has done today in two at-bats has a single and a double and a run batted in, and now he comes out. Here's the announcement on Bob Welch running for Pedro Guerrero. Guerrero gets a round of applause as he comes in the dugout. Boy, he's a good-looking young hitter. Year now has 13 hits in 29 at bats. He's getting up close to 500. Here's Garvey, one for four. He singled the right field against Allen in the seventh inning. Neal out of a stretch, looks at Welch, and the pitch to Garvey, breaking ball strike. Steve flinched and quit on it, and the ball broke back over. They get a right-hander up in the Mets bullpen. They've used Pacella, Bombach, Glenn, and Allen. Now the strike one pitch to Garvey. Allen delivers, breaking ball down and away, one and one. Jeff Reardon, who was in last night's game and the night before, Jeff is loosening up in the Mets bullpen. One ball and one strike. 
The breaking ball hit off the end of the back foul. Jorgensen racing over. He will not get it. It's in the stands behind the auxiliary scoreboard. It was a good pitch by Neil Allen. Not only breaking down, but away. So Garvey just did hit it off the end of the bat. One and two. Nine, six, New York. Nobody out. Bottom of the ninth. Guerrero was opened up with a double. He hit the fence 385 feet away. And the pitch to Garvey. Breaking ball fouled away. And another good downer that seems to not only be breaking down, but breaking away from a right-hand batter. And Garvey, again, just did get a piece of it. Steve has struck out twice today in the first and in the fifth. One and two. Allen checking. Garvey waiting. Welch, a cautious lead at second with nobody out. The one-two pitch is fouled away again. Off to the right upstairs. For Garvey waiting. Nobody out in the ninth inning. That's nine. Dodgers six. Right-handed Allen delivers. Breaking ball is pulled on the ground. Back a third. Foul ball. Third base on by Dave Malone way behind him, so Trevino didn't see Malone call it foul, but it was foul. And then Trevino just went through the act and threw it away. And the crowd, not watching Malone, they weren't aware of the fact that it was a foul ball. So Garvey will come back, and the count remains one ball and two strikes. So Welch running for Guerrero at second base. Nine runs, 11 hits for New York. Six runs, 11 hits for the Dodgers. Nobody out in the ninth inning. Dusty Baker on deck. Neil Allen, the fourth New York pitcher, hands at his side. And Garvey's not ready, just as Allen is. For a timeout. Now they lock in. Garvey waiting. Allen out of his stretch. Here's the one-two pitch to Steve. Fastball, a little high, ball two. So he gave all breaking balls, and he had him set up. And then the fastball missed. Two balls, two strikes. Garvey started the game hitting 281. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Breaking ball, lifted to straightaway center. It's playable. Joe Youngblood is right there, and Welch isn't going anywhere. He'll just stand right there at the bag. So Garvey, a fly ball to center. He goes one for five. Dusty Baker coming up. Dusty Baker singled and walked, fouled out, and had a scoring fly ball. So Neil Allen battling Dusty Baker with Ron Say on deck. And if they can get down to Thomas' spot, they would probably use Reggie Smith. Here's the pitch to Baker, and he takes high. Dusty, one for two today. So he has 13 hits in 23 at-bats. Better than 500 against the Mets this year. The 1-0 pitch, they take high, ball two. Dusty picked up his 13th run batted in against New York with a scoring fly ball. He's in a one-man gang against them. Naturally beat them the other night with that... Three and two double up the alley in left center. Now he comes up with the Dodgers trailing by three and one man on base. Allen ready, and Neal's 2 old fish in there. Fastball, turn one. Allen has allowed four home runs this year and has earned run average an even four. The Dodger runs, however, with charged to Gwynn, Bombach, and Priscilla. As of now, Gold stands to lose. Bombay stands to pick up the win, and Allen would get a save. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Baker. Outside, ball three. Of course, for the Dodgers, they would love to get into a position where they have the tying run at the plate. They haven't been that close to the game since back in the third inning. So one out, bottom of the ninth. 
checking. Baker waiting. He'll set at the belt. 3-1 pitch is popped in the air. Coming in from right field is Claudel Washington. He's there now, and Claudel makes the catch. So after Guerrero doubled, Garvey and Baker hit pop flies to the outfield, and the batter is Ron Say. talking before about maybe Reggie Smith hitting, but then again, if you remember, we were talking also about the fact that when Reggie went down to the batting cage today, his back was bothering him, so it could be Reggie would not be able to hit, and on that note, Gerald Thomas now comes up the steps, and Daryl goes to the on-deck circle. Here is Ron Say, with a runner at second, two out in the ninth, 9-6 New York, and two streaks on the line. Allen Reddy delivers ball one. The Mets have lost seven in a row. The Dodgers have won four in a row. And the Mets are trying to erase both of them. Now there are 1-0 pitch on the way to say that's over for a strike. One and one. Neil Allen working on Ron Say. Two out of the ninth inning. Reading John Stearns. Now the right-hander set. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Breaking ball and a good one for a strike in the count one and two. So Neil Allen battling for the save today. Bombeck will get the win. And for Allen, his 11th save if he can get the job done. And he has almost done it. Two out and two strikes on save. Don't forget, the Dodgers go to Houston for three and then San Francisco for four. All four giant games televised. The pitch outside, ball two. They play Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights in Houston. Thursday is an off day. And they play Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader next Sunday at Candlestick. 2-2 two, two pitch to Ron Say. Here comes Allen. Breaking ball is grounded to short. Tavares is up with it cleanly. Close to first, and that's it. The Mets finally win a game on this trip in California, and they beat the Dodgers 9-6. Nine, nine runs, 11 hits, one error. The Dodgers six runs. They win a lot of games with six runs, but not today. Six runs, 11 hits, and no errors. The winning pitcher, Mark Bombach, with a save by Neil Allen, and the losing pitcher, Dave Gold. He's 3-6. Once again, the final score of the ball game: the Mets nine, Dodgers six. Okay, the Dodgers fall uh, temporarily, at least, to three and a half behind Houston in the National League West. The- Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the Radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball! Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the Radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Feel free to browse our library of over 1,000 classic games and be sure to spread the word. Long live baseball. Thank you for listening to this game on Classic Baseball on the radio. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast.
feel free to browse our library of over 1,000.